Hey, what's up, everyone? It's me, Randy Liu, a.k.a. Nanonoko. Um, we're back for another APL. It's actually the main event, the final event. Uh, a lot of money up top. A lot of big names actually reached this final table. Uh, joining me today will be Lin G. Say hello to the people out there. 
Hey, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. And uh, I'm excited to watch a star-studded field. Yeah, and we got a bunch of Chinese people watching too, I believe, Lynn. You want to say hello to them as well? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, well, guys, so today for the main event, uh, there's 220,000 USD up top. But before we dive into all the little details, let's take a look at who made our final table so we can decide because there's still time to do some final table betting, nine minutes left to be exact. Um, let's take a look at the odds and uh, figure out who should we be betting on. So these are the nine guys at our final table. Cami Styles got a massive chip leader, but before we get into all the little details of who you think we should put money on, Lynn, let's take Let's listen to a couple of videos from the GG squad on who they chose to bet on at this final. The APL main event final table here, and some good odds out there to gamble on. J Rodome, my G from NZ, in 38 to 1 if you want to take his action. No more tilt, second in chips, 8.9 to 1 to take the thing down. And he's playing aggressive so far. It's good if you want to win a tournament. But I would go with my guy Ansu Fati, 31, who I've played with at cash games. I respect that. He'd be my pick for a little bet here. All right, we've got some APL main event final table betting going on here. Uh, this time we got we're a little bit more familiar with uh, some of the players. Uh, it's, it's a pretty interesting one. Uh, one of the first things to take note is the fact that, you know, third, fourth, and fifth are all significantly better prices than uh, second place in chips and it's for good reason um, all three players are very strong players um, typically you know if they've got the Austrian flag it just usually ends up being some sort of end boss um, and with uh, with the players in this situation I mean Christian Rudolph it just you know button loss it just doesn't make sense to bet on anyone other than him it's just like he's the man is blessed he's one of the best to ever do it he finds a way to to put himself in the situation day in and day out you know Almost any major series, anything's going on, that man finds a way. I, it, it's very hard to bet on anyone else other than him. I think he's a strong bet. I think Taxi Driver as well. I, I, I'm actually pretty familiar with him. I'm not going to dox him, but uh, you know he's a he's a strong player. He's he's been in the game for a while. I think uh, can't go wrong with him. Uh, and I mean Molinelli, another strong player, uh, play against very regularly, day in day out on the on the weekday schedule on the GG Poker streets honestly i think i'm just gonna keep it easy any of the three austrians are gonna be strong picks and if you're looking for i you know as the prices move perhaps taxi driver doesn't get as much money placed down on them um and the odd skew you can maybe wait for that and snipe get a better price but uh on it yeah uh taxi driver christian rudolph or molinelli those are my three picks for uh you know and i think i think i'm gonna put my money in my mouth is i'm gonna put i'm gonna put 50 on taxi driver and i'm gonna put 50 on rudolph right now what's up everybody east rams here with another final table betting video uh the apl trophy huge tournament i actually don't know exactly how much it is for first let me have a very quick look Two hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars. uh a lot of names well at least three names uh, on the four names actually on the final table that i recognize taxi driver molinelli chris rudolph and ansu fati i know all very good players, but as you can see, I've placed my bet on Chris Rudolph, who is just a yeah, top lead poker player. Um, I would say good luck to everybody, but mostly to Chris. Good luck, guys. So you heard it from the other uh, three GG squad members. They seem to all know the same faces out there. Um, I already Egyptian had a mouthful to say about all those uh, Austrian players out there, but eventually he settled down on Chris Rudolph and, and one of the other guys. Let's take a look at the odds real fast uh, one more time so we can kind of get some insight of who we think is a good final table bet because we still got six minutes left to do so. You go into the GG Poker Client, click the final table, click the final table betting and throw some money out there. Um, take a look at this. Most of the money is on Chris Rudolph. He's the biggest name pro at this final table. Um, he's won the 25K before. Uh, obviously, this tournament is a, is a much smaller buy -in, but there's still a lot of money up top, 220,000 USD. And, um, but, you know, Cami style, that chip lead is going to be very hard to overcome. Lynn, taking a look at this, uh, what are your thoughts on maybe is a good final table bet? 
Yeah, Nano. So um, I actually really like a bit of an underdog pick uh, who happens to be No More Tilt. He's coming in second in chips. He's getting better odds than third, fourth, and fifth place while having a significant chip lead. Plus, there's the China flag there. Um, so yeah, definitely going to be rooting for No More Tilt. Uh, Jia Yol. Yep. So No More Tilt, yeah, he does come in second in chips, but they're just there's this reputation, right? The German, the Austrian players are the best MTT players in the world. But that doesn't necessarily mean that No More Till isn't as good as them. He's just, he doesn't know. He's just not as known as the other players, potentially. We don't know him personally, but you know, if you looking from a final table betting point of view, assuming the skill edge is exactly the same, you would always want to pick the guy with the most chips, but also the best odds to combination. So No More Till, as you say, would be the big value there because even look at Chris Rudolph, right? Like he's got thirty, thirty-two million. No more till has almost two X's stack, but and you're getting a better price. So um, you know, it just this game does have us. Luck still is an important part of this game, right? Like just because you're the best player doesn't mean you're going to win. So you know, you got to take into account the odds. If you're really YOLO, you can go for Jay Rado, right at the very bottom, thirty-eight to one. Now, I don't know the difference in skill between J Rado and Ride the Light, but they have the same stack size, but the odds to win are very different. If I didn't know the difference between the two, I would always pick the guy that's 37 to 1 instead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it looks, and I thought I found that very interesting too, but it looks like Ride the Light has actually won quite a few tournaments on GG, uh, which is why his odds are significantly worse. You're but right. uh, yeah. Maybe the other guy is just unlucky on GG, you know? Like he hasn't made his <laughs> moment, but now we're at the main event. He's got zero dollars uh, in earnings and we'll take a look at the player profiles later, but we'll, we'll see if we're potentially accurate. But the three GG squad members, they mentioned Taxi Driver, Molinelli, Chris Rudolph, and the other guy, Ansu Fati. Ansu Fati is another reg, but he is a cash game player. Cocky T said, I played a lot of this guy in cash game. Um, Kaki T plays pretty high stakes, so this guy has to be pretty darn good, especially at post-flop play. Um, you know, Mol Molinelli, he won a World Series of Poker bracelet or WSOPC bracelet. I'm not sure which one it was exactly. Uh, but, you know, I think it's going to be hard to take it away from Chris Rudolph. Chris Rudolph is a high stakes regular. He plays 10Ks, 25Ks very regularly. He's one of the best in the game. Uh, we do probably have a 40 big one average coming into the final table, so he's going to have room to work with. I don't know his exact uh, number of big blinds, but uh, I don't know. But we're not talking about the chip leader enough, I feel like. I know you don't really like to go for the chip leader, <laughs> but i kind of getting these vibes that maybe this chip leader isn't as experienced as the three Austrian players, but he did something right to get double the chip stack. So uh, I hope he's like kind of one of those crazy, hard-to-read players and just really puts it to these... Uh, Austrian players who are good, but you know what? They're going to be very ICM aware, right? They're going to know pay jumps are big. They're probably going to make some big folds that uh, other people might, and that might be some free chips to take. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to see how Cami style plays. Um, we actually have a very interesting hand coming up from him uh, once we get into those player profiles. Yeah, we will be getting to that very, very soon. Um, final table betting is going to close very, very soon. So why you can, Click into the GG Poker client, find that final table betting, put your last, you rest your bankroll on it if you're a busto, who knows? <laughs> I have no idea what your bankroll situation is. Personally, if I had a chance to open a client right now, I would put some money on Chris Rudolph <laughs> and maybe a little bit on No More Tilt, but uh, that's my read on this play. <laughs> but I think the final table betting is about to close, so why don't we just move on to talk about what has happened this week in the APL production? Let's see that graphic. There we go. Some notable runs in the King of the Hill bounty. Eventually, it was the winner, Guangto, who's probably a Chinese player based on the screen name alone. Um, Egyptian did play this event, and he did get a 122nd place. Um, what's the next event we got that happened this week? Event number 12, the Shan Silk Road Open. I like how they just got these fancy names for all these different APO events, uh, all the different cities all, all across Asia, whether it's China, Vietnam, et cetera, et cetera. The Crane did win this tournament for 22,000. Look, Egyptian min cashing this event too. Can't get any deep runs. All he can do is just do this little who he thinks we should bet on in the final table betting. <laughs> we won't be seeing him on any of these APO final tables, but what happened in the next event, event number 13, 
the Kunming Mountain Monster Stack, Leon 777. Uh, that's a very lucky number, but that's not the lucky number in China. So I'm gonna assume this is one of the Western players out there. He got first for 19K. And event number 14 is probably the next one. Sanya Bay Shooting Star Bounty event. Well, Val Val took the top prize, $20,000. Apparently Chris Mormon was playing this. I haven't heard that name in a while. He got 66th place for $939. And then we are on to event number 15, the Beijing Capital Cup. Eventually it was Marty Nass won, who eventually won that tour for actually 39,000, quite a nice prize. Uh, we can see some of the notable runs like Brian Paris there who got 90th place for $568. And now we are down to our main event, number 16. These are some of the guys who made the deep run but could not reach our final table. All the big stars, you see Alex Foxen, uh, Kose, Adrian Mateos, Egyptian again. Daniel DeVorce was the deepest run of these guys, 41st place for 4K, but none of them made it. But Chris Rudolph did one of the other big names. So that's going to be what happened this week. Today's tournament, a 12 million RMB prize pool, 1.4 million RMB for first place. That's the equivalent of 221,000 USD. Everyone is guaranteed 143,000 renminbi, which is about 22,000 USD. The buy-in was 1,888 renminbi and 6,912 entries. That is a ton of day ones, a ton of rebuys. Some of these guys are in for multiple bullets. Some of these guys made it off just one bullet. Um, the minimum cash was 4,775 renminbi for the top 700 players. So. That's all. That's everything that happened, Lynn. Uh, you, I mean, we've we've. This is our third stream together. Sadly, it will be our last, <laughs> but hopefully, this will be a bit of a blast. And what's what chit chat a little bit? But before we do that, let's take a look at what happened in the Super Millions last week. The final hand. You know what? Got to click raise somewhere. Oh, oh no! Two sevens and two queens. Ferrari man is very likely oh. to win this tournament if he can dodge that seven, Roddy. That this is wrong. Very possible. It is like 23 big blinds on the side no, of the list. No, this is a blimp jam. Especially when you saw what happened with the A7 last time. He's not going to make that kind of a mistake. This is all in. Pocket 7s. Is Limitless going to send it? Yes, he is. Queens are going to make the call. Limitless dodged a couple of bullets tonight, but now he needs to find a 7 or it is all over. Hearts is no good. It needs to be a 7. There it is. GG. Ferrari man wins the 36th edition of the High Rollers Super Millions. The man satellited his way in $1,000, turned into $452,000. Limitless takes a second place. Oh, just have this is not wow. nothing. This is two queens. Yeah. This, is king. this is the classic and a heads up. And it's a How limp. do the chips go in? Is the question. Not will they go in? Limp but, uh, raise is coming from Spark. Just the question is, is it like 16 million or is it all in? They're playing 30, I mean all in. three big blends effective. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see them re raise smaller. Just get some action. Two Queens is just a stranglehold and heads up. There's the 18 million. The Ace King is probably going to jam. We're going to have a coin flip, and it's an $18,000 USD pay difference between this, these two guys. And it's a big Spark coin flip. Can, he could win this tournament if he can hold with two queens against Fizzy Cali. Does Fizzy Cali ever just call? Do we ever just no. see a flop here? This is Never. a slam dunk jam. He's just trying to trick his opponent, try to get him to side call up with like an ace jack, an ace 10, maybe uh, something like that. This is no chance. This is not going to If Physicality wins, we just see him. He's, he's running out of time. Here we no, go. I like how much time he made. All in from Physicality. Spark is, you know, he's taking his time. He can't believe this thing might be over. 128 million in the middle on a classic coin flip. And it Ooh. is nothing on that flop. Spade. It is something Three. on that turn. Wow. Three. Spade. Ace. Ace. King. Something. What that There's... could be. No, it's not. It's a deuce. deuce. And we are over. It's over, Lynn. We've got a, a champion. 
It sparked 479,000 UN, 73,900. Well, Lynn, a Chinese gun guy won it last week. You said No More Tilt might be able to win it this week. Well, he's also from China. That would be pretty cool to see. He's got tough competition, though. As you know, there's three Austrian players. Um, as you, and I don't know if you saw that Super Millions clip there. It was Victor Malinowski who made it to the heads up, but he lost to a guy who sat in line into the 10K uh, with just $1,000, won over $450,000, and he... He was an unknown player known as the Ferrari man. Okay, that guy was playing like people stink that first week, which is knitting it up, laddering up, and just won the heads up. Uh, Victor Malinowski, now I don't know if you know much about him. His name is Limit, known as Limitless. He and Fedor have been going at it on Twitter. Uh, Fedor initially made a tweet and said, Hey, uh, Limitless, I want, I want to take you up on an offer where you'll play me drunk at uh, any time, any stakes for as many amount of hands. Uh, I heard you've been losing to, to this guy named Stefan for a lot of role, and I want to make sure I get some action before you lose your bankroll to him. And then Limitless replied with a tweet to Fedor and says, you know where I'm at. Uh, I'm always online. <laughs> you take two of your, your students. I'll play each of you two tables all at the same time, any number of hands, any, and he was super stone cold serious. So that was, that's what's been going on where they're trying to figure out when to start playing because that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if you've been following that at all, Lynn. Uh, I haven't really, but that's a lot of confidence coming out from Fedor. And I uh, can't see what that, can't wait to see what that gets him. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was pretty crazy. It's, it's pretty, it's a lot of talk right now. Um, Limitless was the guy who did get loose to uh, Ferrari man there. And he's the one that's just like, look, I'm, he basically said, Fedor, you're all talk. Uh, be careful what you ask for. Uh, he's going to maybe put on some hurt. Who knows? That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But before that happens, we do have our APL main event happening now. And let's take a look at some final table profiles and talk about those hands. All right, here is our final nine players. The chip leader, Cami Style from Argentina. Largest score on GG with an eighth or better finish. But look at the second bullet there. Not second bullets, actually eight bullets <laughs> to make it to day two. But this guy was determined. But hey, if you're telling me I'm going to be the chip leader of the final table with this much money on top, I don't care if it's one eight bullets. You can send me on 20 bullets, I can guarantee this. It's pretty impressive. Um, yeah. <laughs> Eight bullets Some is a lot. What's the most amount of bullets you've put into a single tournament, Lynn? I don't think I've ever put more than three or four. Usually by the end of the first bullet, I just can't wait to like be done playing tournaments and just go back to cash games. Yeah, um, well, this guy clearly <laughs> loves it, right? Because he's put in eight bullets. He probably would have put in more if he needed to. Anyways, let's take a look at the hand history he played. Is it interesting? And oh my gosh, this one? This is the very first hand history we're going to show you guys in the pre-show, and it is ridiculous, right? Like, Cami Style, this is deep in the tournament, defends the Jack-9. He floats the flop on King-8-5. He has nothing. And then he turns a pair, and he's checked raising. Talk to me, Lynn. What's happening here? Do you understand what's going on? Man, I was seeing that it's our third stream together. I think you're starting to understand how much I like my back or straight draws, back door flush draws. Um, we have one of them, uh, but I will have to say, and it's rare that I get to say this, I think I would have played every single post flop street just slightly less aggressive than Cammy. So I would have folded the flop and then just called the turn. Uh, what about you? Do you even make it to the turn, Randy? I mean, look, if I was so, I just thought my guy was see better any flop. Maybe we can argue with check calling the flop, assuming it goes check, check on the turn and you just throw a bet on the river and win it most of the time, right? But let's just assume <laughs> that was a little bit of your read. And then the turn though, he's, he's turned a pair and he's check raising it. Now, is he check raising to turn his hand into a bluff? Is it to charge the draws? I'm really not too sure exactly. Uh, but it's it's mighty strong, and this is very far in the tournament. If you look at the blinds, they're quite big in their stack sizes, but not only that, look at the number of players at the table. There's only six players at this table. That means that it's probably final two or three tables of the tournament. So when he makes this big of a play, uh, I guess he expects his opponent to fold a king sometimes uh, because they're pretty deep. Imagine he had, his opponent had king 10. Is he really gonna bet call this turn? 
going so close to the final title? I'm not too sure. It, it's crazy. It's the unknown player. There's three Austrian guys under right under him. But uh, if he makes these kind of plays, I'm a little bit worried for the Austrian pros. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely has some tricks up his sleeve. Um, and I like him making moves like this because when we turn a pair and we decide to turn that into a check raise bluff, we actually make it a lot less likely that our opponents have now made two pair. Um, so yeah, I, I like the play. I don't think I would ever make it, but I can get behind it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, even if his opponent had a hand like Ace King, he's got to be pretty darn scared, right? To get check raise on this turn, like, if the big blind can easily have an eight nine, a king nine, a six seven, maybe a set. So it's actually a really bold play. I like it. I think it's actually underutilized. I personally don't do it so much myself, but I might throw in a random check raise here and there for pair and get some big folds. But that was our chip leader. Let's take a look at the second place guy, which is the man from China. 71 big blinds, no more tilt. Well, I hope he's not going to tilt off any chips in this final table because it's a lot of money up top. He's coming. He finished actually finished third in chips after day one. There's a lot of players remaining after day one. So that's uh, pretty impressive here. Um, you know, he doesn't have that much GG poker winnings, but that's all right. Hey, he actually satellite into this event for just 30 bucks. Pretty cool. Yeah, definitely not a bad feeling. Um, it seems like historically, Chinese players have had a history of tilting. So I'm really hoping that his username keeps him in check and uh, <laughs> we get to see well, some good poker. I mean, a part of me wants to see him tilt and just let <laughs> destroy Chris Rudolph or something and it just plays solid to the end. Let's take a look at his hand history. Did he tilt in this hand history? All right, he's got the ace nine. He raises. Okay, it's pretty standard. He bets the flop. Okay. And the turn, he actually value jams the ace nine for his opponent's last 10 big lengths and gets called by worse. Um, what are your thoughts on this hand? Do you like the flop bet on the bet on the flop, the jam on a turn? Yeah, so I know it's a flop bet and then a turn jam, but I think what's really important to keep in mind is that like we all, we only really had 10 big blinds effectives to start the hand. So when we're getting it in with second pair, top kicker, um, definitely not feeling too bad about it, especially on a board that is as straw heavy and as wet as this one. Our opponent has plenty of opportunities to call off with worse hands. In fact, they have some draws that aren't even pairs that are obligated to call off. Um, so yeah, I really like putting in the chips in the head and uh, hopefully pushing our equity. I actually think this is a brilliant bet on the turn and it's a play that some guys don't make, especially uh, maybe even some of the higher stakes guys or some of the middle stakes uh, regs, right? They just think, well, if I get called on this flop, you know, my ace nine, I, maybe I should just check pop control so I don't, I don't have to pay off a whole stack uh, by the river card, you know? But if you really think about it, like you said, this, this hand starts very shallow, around 10 to 11 big blinds, right, to start the hand. Usually the big line, when they see this flop, if they had top pair, they're probably just going to check raise you all in, right? They don't have much stack to play for. It's very draw heavy. The fact that he just checked call makes it seem very likely he's got a middle pair hand. Well, if you, he's got a middle pair, you out kick him. Or he's got a very kind of a weak draw, like an 8-7, like no spades. That's like, oh, doesn't really want to check raise all in. So you need to charge those hands. It's a brilliant bet from our Chinese player who's currently in second place. and. Um, I think I think the odds underestimated. They're like, well, we know those three Austrian players are big pros. Uh, they, we're going to give them a, a worse deal. But I think the value is you're right. The Chinese guy here in second place. So let's take a look, though. I believe one of the Austrian guys is in third place. The taxi driver who's got a golf cart avatar, which is pretty funny as a taxi driver's screen name. It took him five bullets in the same flight to make day two. Now, there were multiple flights you can enter to enter this main event. Usually, most guys, they bust one bullet in an event. They wait for the next day one so they can start fresh on the levels. This guy was on tilt because he put in five bullets into the same vein. He's like, I'm getting through today or I'm not playing ever again. And he did it. <laughs> 55 big blinds coming in third position. Let's take a look at the hand histories. This is supposedly one of the more experienced players. And this hand, I'm not too sure, sure what to make of it. Uh, Adrian Mateos, a big name pro, raises, and he just calls with Ace King suited um, here and, and actually creates a three way pot. Checks to him, he bets the flop, he jams the turn. But I think the pre flop is very interesting, Lynn. What do you think? 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't think flatting Ace King off of twenty big, twenty five big blinds is super typical. Um, I probably get it in a large portion of the time because it's not like Ace King is a hand we necessarily want to trap with. Um, we we're still losing versus any pair. We don't have great equity uh, versus really any hands except for exactly what our opponent actually happens to have here. But then once we get to post flop, I think it's pretty standard where now we've made top pair. Uh, and we feel pretty comfortable getting the money in. Yeah, as when he, once he got to the flop, I think it was pretty easy for him to play. Yeah, like you said, the, the pre-flop seems quite interesting. I'm not too sure what to make of it. Had I seen this hand and not known this guy was a pretty big player, uh, I would have just assumed maybe he was trying to like ladder or like squeeze his way to the end. Yes. I'm not too yeah. sure. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at the fourth place guy coming into this final table. It is Molinelli. He's actually a bracelet winner, event number 81. He won the six max bounty event for $243,000. He's got 1.3 million GG poker winnings. And this guy only took one bullet to reach our final table. I think we got a hand uh, that he played during the WSMP bracelet. Yeah, this is the final hand when he won that bracelet. And, and in this hand, he's got the King-8 offsuit, it looks like. And what, I haven't seen this hand yet. I'm, I'm a little bit interested to see what he does. Is he a, a re-raising type? He calls a flop stop pair. Check. All right, let's see, ace queen. I guess C bet's a standard. What do you think he does with king? He check raise or check call? Uh, seeing that we're not that deep, I definitely wouldn't mind a check call, but we definitely have a harder time getting sacks in if we don't check raise. Um, there it is. He check raises. He's like, this is playing for specs. Now, Eskimo Bro is actually in the pretty tricky spot. Because he's got a nutted draw. He's got an overguard. He takes the call. Now what happens? Nana, what do you think of the call with Ace Queen on the flop? I think it's fine because, you know, you kind of just see what happens. I'm just curious how he loses his stack in this hand, right? Like, he just, there's nothing on the turn. Is he calling again? Okay, he's calling oh, again. Wow. How does he lose his hand? Okay. So this is what I would coin as a gift, Nano. Um, it's when you show up on the river, you realize you don't have anything, and you just gift your opponent the rest of your chips. Wow, so he jams on the bluff ace. But King 8, I guess it's kind of hard for him to beat a bluff, but he does beat the bluff. He makes the call, wins the bracelet, and it was a bounty event, so he actually got... I believe six thousand more dollars. Oh, you win your own bounce. You win a lot of money for making that big call there. And in this hand, during the APL main event, he flat smooth calls with pocket nines, calls a flop when he flops a little flush draw. This one actually had a set in this hand. He value bets the river and gets called. What do you think about this one? I really like the cheeky little river value bet on the end. Um, I think it's just a really good move. And if after our opponent has checked the turn and the river on the fourth spade, they've now somehow found a way to bluff raise us. Good for them. They deserve the pot, have it. Um, but otherwise, yeah. And I also think this is just a size that we're gonna want to bet a lot. As a bluff, um, it's relatively cheap and it, I don't know how often we should be getting called uh, by our opponent when they don't have a spade. Yeah, his actually was a, a, a no spade call on the river. Uh, nice value bet from Molinelli. He's coming in fourth place. Now let's take a look at the biggest name, in my opinion, to reach our final table. Chris <laughs> Rudolph, 40 big lines. He's a high roller crusher. Now the last guy had 1.5 million in GG poker winnings. This guy's got 3x that. 4.6 million in GG poker winnings. He's won the 25K WSOP event for a bracelet. 1.8 million US dollars. That is a big score. He's, he's a big crusher hailing from Austria. I believe we got some a hand from his final table. Here we go. In queen versus queen 10. So Here Unikin the one all in and at risk. In Dominating good shape, shape to double up. <laughs> 10 ball on the flop. Just doesn't stop. Unikin needs a king or a jack on the river to stay alive. Can we squeeze paint? Nope. We cannot. It's a seven on the river. That will do it. Christian Rudolph has won the 25K Poker Players Championship for more than $1.8 million. Chris Unikin, second place. 
Wow. So he got lucky there with the Queen 10 to be crit the big hoony there. You can see David Williams was just shaking his head throughout that final hand. Kind of reminds me of you, Lynn, when you saw people stink just getting lucky over and over again. Just, man, I can't believe this guy just shipped it. Uh, but that was Chris Rudolph. And look at this hand history. This guy's hitting quads. How can any of them stop him today? Uh, what do you think about the way he played this hand? He, let me check back the turn of the quads there. I, I really like it. Um, on this turn, I can definitely see an argument for betting as there's just so many draws out there. Uh, but with that said, it's not like our hand needs any protection. And then also, uh, when we check back, we give our opponent either an opportunity to go ahead and bet the river as a bluff, or uh, in this case, hit something. What do you think of his turn check back? The turn check back is perfect. And the reason is, it's not just that you have got quads. The reason is we got to look at what stack we're playing for remaining in the hand. And it looks like it was about eight big blinds remaining. So if it's only eight big blinds remaining, if my opponent's got an eight, he's not folding anyways. Um, he's got a flush draw, like give him a chance to catch up. If he's got a straight draw like 10-9, well, if you had bet the turn, he's going to fold that hand and he was drawing dead. So a beautiful check back with the quad sixes there. And then his opponent just, uh, you know, he rivers the, the top pair and it's, it's hard for him to fold when there's so many chips in the middle. So well done from Chris Rudolph. He's coming in fifth position. Let's take a look at the sixth position player. It is Ansu Fati 31. This guy is a cash game player, according to Kaki T, one of the GG squad members. He actually almost won a bracelet. He got second place in the $600 six max, $124,000 score. Um, clearly guys who play cash games love six max events. So it makes sense that he did well in that one. Let's take a look at the hand history that he played. And I just see 10 dudes off, so I don't really have much more to say than, okay, we still giving respects out to Doyle Brunson. It's been many, many years since Doyle's won two bracelets with 10 dudes and we're still doing it. Uh, what do you see in this hand? Well, my first question is, is it respect for Doyle Brunson or is it just complete disrespect for the player in the big blind? Because <laughs> I'm not sure which one. Um, I think the flop bet is uh, realistically pretty standard. It's an ace high flop. We have a gutter um, and more importantly, we just have 10 high uh, and our opponent has a bunch of cards they can fold. Just any two middling cards uh, without a heart is pretty happy to go ahead and just let it go. Um, we do get lucky, and as someone who is perpetually on a downswing, I hate seeing other people get lucky, uh, but I suppose that's what it takes to get to the final table. So overall, pretty standard hand. Yeah, um, you know, that's a good point about betting the flop as standard. Now, inexperienced players might be like, well, you just got a little inside straight draw, there's an ace high board, aren't you scared of the ace? But the thing is, I personally would never be scared of the ace. The reason is if we look at the stack sizes, they are very shallow to start the hand. So what that means is if my opponent had an ace and my opponent limps into me in the small blind, they jam any ace practically, ace two, ace three, ace four, they're just gonna jam it in because there's no stack to play for. They might as well take the raw act of the hand and try and take it down. Uh, so nice hand for Ansu Fati. Let's take a look at the next guy at our final table, CC. WTGNKQ, <laughs> that's his name. He's from Brazil. He's got a golden banner for winning the high roller millions for 183,000. That's a multi-day event. Let's take a look at his hand history. Brazilian players, they always up to no good. And oh my gosh, this hand is pretty funny here. Taxi driver uh, raises pretty flop. CCW calls in the big blind. Then CCW open jams. He's got two overs in the gut shot and gets called by worse, the Queen 10 and the Queen Jack holds. What is going on, Lynn? Uh, it's definitely pretty aggressive. Um, but also if we know that we're somehow going to put in 2X pot with two overs and a gutter, I definitely like going ahead and just putting in the money ourselves. Um, we're obviously not really looking for a call here, except for maybe by this exact hand that Taxi happens to be holding. Um, Seems loose, doesn't it? Like this guy just a called bit. a seven million <laughs> shove. There's three point five million in the middle, of four million. It's, it's a two x over bet shove. Like it seems a little loose, right? Um, I guess technically he beats ten jack is what he's thinking, or like uh, what what is there? 
shoot. I mean, I'm having trouble naming some more hands. You know, the 10-7. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it was ambitious. Taxi Driver is at our final table, so we seem to get a, a few hand here to so with him involved. It will be quite interesting to see how CCW takes it, but we, we know he's aggressive. Let's take a look at who's in the next position here. It is Jay Rado. He is the final table betting long shot. He's got huge odds, 37 to 1. Uh, he's only got 30,000 GG poker winnings. He's hailing from New Zealand, currently in eighth position. What? How did he play his hand? That's what I'm curious about. Let's take a look. Seven, six offsuit. He makes good calls on the flop and turn in Rivers two pair. Uh, let's talk about the turn. Uh, I think the flop is pretty standard in the blind versus blind spot, but he calls another bet with a, kind of a weak pair. Uh, what do you think about it? Is this standard or is this a bit ambitious? Yeah, so I think versus this exact sizing, it's pretty interesting. Uh, our opponent bets pretty much exactly half pot. If they bet anything less, like a quarter or a third, I always call never fold. And as uh, if they bet like 70, 80%, I probably also just go ahead and let my hand go a lot of the time, especially without a heart. Um, with that said, when I know I'm just going to river two pair, I obviously never fold nano. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I'm sure you yeah. feel the same way. But yeah. uh yeah, versus half pot. It's it's actually really interesting. I'm not actually sure what I would do here. What about you? It's a tricky situation. Um, there are a lot of draws on the turn. You know, opponent could have like a 10-9, a 10-8, two hearts. So I, I can definitely see a case for making this call. You just, it really depends on your opponent's tendencies. Are they the type of triple barrel bluff? And then it makes the yeah. turn a little bit more dicey. Um, but, you know, I definitely think it's a fine call. It just really is player dependent. They're going to know more about the players than we are since we've only seen uh, all these, these few hand histories. But that is Jay Rado. He's coming in eighth position. I believe we have one more guy. Ride the light, 13.9 big one. He actually finished it as the chip leader of his day one flight, but he's coming in at the bottom. Uh, he's got a GGSOP title. Let's take a look at his hand history. He's got the ace nine. So he's actually battling with our current chip leader, Cami Style. So in this hand, uh, right, the light uh, flats in position of ace nine suited and comes three ways. And it checks to him on the flop and he goes for a stab on king four two flush draw with nothing. Three opponents, uh, two other opponents in this hand. Is this a standard bet when you see the preflop razor check to you? Or is this kind of like, well, what's going on? Yeah, no, I almost had to stop you right there. You can't say we have nothing when we have a back nor straight draw and back nor flush draw <laughs> on the flop. That should be illegal. Um, no, uh, I think when we bet on the flop, I think oftentimes we kind of just hope to take it down. Um, yeah, when it gets checked to us, we also have just an opportunity to go ahead and turn uh, a diamond, a three, a five, as well as a pair. Um, I personally think my hand is still just a little too good to bet. And also I think it's super annoying when we get raised. We don't really want to fold out the additional equity we have from our backdoor straight draw and backdoor flush draw, which I'm still not sure you believe those two things exist. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see the backdoor, that... uh, backdoor flush draw way, way more. Um, it, okay. it seems that he had a read on VW Gunther, our original pre-flop razor, that if he did not be at bet the king four deuce, which is a pretty safe board, it seems like a, a weak, like an ace queen ace jack that's just going to check fold a lot. That's my thoughts sure, on yeah. it. I'm not, I'm not too sure, uh, but it looks like in the end it was Cammy style who ended up making pubs with straight draw. He turns a pair, goes check check, and then he rivers two pair, but his opponent Cammy style rivers top pair. He gets some value. So um, that was a little bit of battle between the chip leader and our ninth place finisher. Let us go to the final table because whole cards are going to be up very, very soon. 23 seconds. You can see that timing down. Uh, when we reach the final table, well, in 15 seconds or so, I believe there's going to be some final table seat swapping. If you're unsure what that means is ninth place guy he gets to choose who he wants to swap with first in eighth place seventh place and so on eventually the chip leader which is cami style will get last say on who he wants position on i think you were discussing the last previous weeks that you just want to sit across from each other or something like that um any any new thoughts on the seat selection process 
uh, no, but I'm very excited to see what the Midlink Stacks do uh, because we know that they're good players who have historically won titles and bracelets. Um, I think if they go ahead and try to put like one seat in between each other, um, I think that backs up my point a little bit. Whereas if they just line up all in a row, um, I might have to reevaluate what I said last week, Nano. There's a chance they line up in a row. And the reason I say that they keep taking position on each other, right? And that's eventually going to make a lineup. Let's see what happens here. So Ansu Fati is one of the good regs out there. He takes position on taxi driver. Chris Rudolph, he takes position on the cash game player and taxi driver. So a line is happening. Molinetti is going to switch positions with Chris Rudolph. So actually throws Chris Rudolph all the way across <laughs> the table. Now it's taxi driver. Um, who is he taking position on? Let's see. I believe he's going to take position on Chris Rudolph. That's my read, but maybe I'm wrong. No, nah, he just, ex or time expired. He, he's like, I don't need to change seats. Um, but as they finish up this seat selection, just want to let remind you, there's a free roll starting and the password for that is flip F L I P. Um, talk to the, the moderators in the chat. Final pick goes to Cami style on seat selection. Man, I would take position. I would take ride the lights spot and just take position on all these regs personally. But his time expires. But it's not bad. He's still got position on the biggest name player at the final table. Yeah, I think uh, I think something that looks really important here is when you have a bunch of short stacks all lined up, having position on them seems really helpful. It's super annoying to open just to get jammed on over and over and over again. Um, I like nowhere tilt seat a lot. Yeah, I actually uh, really like Molinelli's seat. Now, he's come in as a pretty good position. He's got position on literally all the known regs out there, right? Ansu Fati, Taxi Driver, Chris Rowe, and the chip leader. Uh, it seems like the smoothest, like, less harmful spot, right? Because, like, the three guys behind him have no stack. So when he raises, he kind of knows what to do. He can jam into them a lot. Um, they're playing for a lot of pay jumps. Anyways, I'll remind you here. Ninth place is guaranteed $22,000 US dollars, and they're playing for a $7,400 pay jump right now. And first place is $220,000. As I tell you about the pay jumps, I see some big hands between some short stacks. I see King Queen suited, and I see Ace King suited. It seems like a go to war situation, right? You got nine big blinds. Definitely. Um, as long as CCW does not jam, I would expect them to go to a flop. A large portion of the time. All right, the light wow. is a practical jam here. Yeah. CCW's got a very easy decision, in my opinion, of Ace King suited. Um, they, yeah, this is bad news, right? The light barely barely got to play potentially. He needs a queen. A diamond? What what, what, what you're gonna see the back door? Watch. Let's see what comes up. <laughs> no, no nope. back door. Guess we're gonna have to hit a queen. Ooh, or a straight. Six for the chop, but that'd be no fun. Let's do some blood. Do it. Nah. First guy out. Well, I believe last week it took a while for us to lose a player. This one on the second hand dealt at our final table. So ride the light is out in ninth place. Cash is for 143,000 renminbi, which is 22,000 USD. We're down to eight, Lynn. Um, I guess we didn't have to build his story too much. There wasn't much of a story <laughs> for that hand. Yeah, this is also uh, the first time I think that I haven't picked the underdog. Um, glad I passed on him this time. That's <laughs> always a risk when you come in as a short stack is uh, you definitely have to flip for your chips. Um, speaking of which, it seems like there was just a little bit of confusion on what the password is. And the free roll password is raise. R-A-I-S-E. Oh, is it? My bad. I, I totally... <laughs> This, 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 oh my God, I'm sorry. That's why there's moderators in chat. I'm trying to troll you guys. These, these chats, they don't, they don't like me right now. They're like, this, this host is telling us fake passwords. Um, but yeah, the password is raised. Uh, that should be starting very, very soon. Uh, I don't know if you saw that, but Cami style, Chipley actually three bet our second place guy, no more tilt, the Jack eight suited. So Cami style is the guy who check raised the turn with the Jack nine and floated that flop with King eight five. So I think Cami style is going to be really one to watch today. Um, he's not those Austrian players, but uh, everyone, uh, 
Like, there's not that many players I know of from Argentina, but the ones that come from the South America region and Argentina stuff are very aggressive and very, very good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like that the South American poker players that are not Brazilians get called very, very good, and the Brazilian players just get called crazy. Um, <laughs> but... No, I mean, to be fair, actually, the Argentinian players are very, very crazy, too. I, I just was trying to you find a different description of words, but uh, something about in South America, they seem to, they're, they're reckless, but not really reckless, they're relentless, I think is a better way to say it. Yeah, I think something that's also super fun for me is uh, because I travel a fair bit and I also play some poker while I travel. It's just seeing how people play differently from country to country. Yeah. Um, I think Chinese players tend to be a little bit more. Ooh, we have a hand brewing. Yeah. What uh, do you think about this? He's got ball. 11 big blinds. He's going to wow. make the call here. Blind versus oh, blind. Oh, my goodness. I know. Potential another bust out. He needs a five or a six to stay in this tournament. One more card to go, Lynn. Is our New Zealand player going to be out? I don't feel it. Oh, oh now it. No. Oh. <laughs> that was actually a troll. You know why? It couldn't have been the Six of Diamonds. He's holding the Six of Diamonds. But I know you thought the same thing, Lynn. I did too. We uh, are down to seven. I want to say congratulations because he got 29,000. He didn't play very many hands. It wasn't congratulations to him, but we got another big hand brewing up. Taxi driver and Molinelli, ace king and ace queen suited. Yeah, wow. Um, this table is trying to make sure we have a short stream today, Nano. What's the pre flop <laughs> play here for Molinelli? He's got 30 big lines to start the hand. I would at this point we're one of the shorter stacks um still yeah versus just such an early position raise i'm not sure i see a reason to three bet too often Ooh, nice well, well now we should have just gotten the chips in obviously but well the uh, thing is if say he three bet a hand like ace queen suited and he got shoved on he might have folded and clearly he would have he would have flopped best uh, one of the things i like to think about whether to three bet a hand like ace queen suited with this stack size is will I be willing to commit all the chips? If the answer is no, I'm gonna three bet fold this hand, then I like smooth calling way, way more because this hand is too powerful. Imagine Absolutely. taxi driver had a hand like pocket jacks or tansy, four bed jams and you four days queen suit. It's a disaster, right? Um, yes. So Molinari seemed to have taken that style of line and he's betting the flop, gets called by worse ace king high. The turn of ace queen suit. I feel like you got a bet with no spade. What are your thoughts? I'm. I think because of because our stacks aren't super deep, I can see an argument for betting. Uh, as a cash game player, I actually check here a ton. Um, when I don't have a spade, it makes it much more likely that my opponent now has completed their flush, mm. uh, and I don't like to have to put in significantly more chips if my opponent chooses to check raise. I still um, suppose you're trying to say, I don't want to accidentally fold the best hand, right? Like, say he bets that's exactly it. there. This, this guy, taxi driver, has got the ace of space. Like, you know what? I'm going to go YOLO, shove, try to move my opponent off like a king, queen, queen, jack. And they probably would, right? It's a big final table, big pay jumps. Because right now, earlier I said it was $7,400 per pay jump from ninth to eighth. But we've already down to seven players. And it's now 39000 guaranteed US up to 52000 13k pay jump now lynn there, there's someone in the chat he says please finish your thoughts about uh what you're saying about the different country play styles yeah so something that i found very interesting about chinese players is it seems like while sometimes i see them play a little bit more passive or a little bit more trappy something i've also noticed is the amount of big blinds that are willing to stack off with a bad hand seems in general to be a lot higher than American players. For instance, I've played with a lot of Chinese players where these business, businessmen are just willing to put in like 500 or 1,000 big lines with one pair or on a bluff or draw. Um, and I feel like I don't see a lot of American players make those moves for as many chips. Yeah. Wow, this is actually a very bold three bet shove for 30 big blinds. Taxi driver taking a big blind versus small blind against the chip leader. Good read. His opponent was just had nothing. Um, but you can see these guys are, they're not scared because we've got two bust outs real quick and, and you know, a three bet shove uh, right there. But um, yeah, I played with some Chinese players too over in Macau and 
they actually um, obviously there's a lot of Chinese players there, so they have, have a very <laughs> wide range. Um, Absolutely, meaning there are some of them that are extremely tight, and then some who are extremely crazy. But there's one thing they all have in common: they seem to hate Ace King. I don't know why, but they always limp Ace King pre flop, especially under gun. For some reason, they'll limp call, but sometimes they'll limp jam it. I don't know. It's just like the weirdest thing ever. But like every single Chinese guy, they're just Ace King's a limping hand pre flop. Yeah, I find that outrageously troll. I saw more limping in Macau than I ever have in my life. Um... They they love them pocket eights. That's the thing. <laughs> they're like you got pocket That's king, but still gonna still gonna crack you. Yeah, still gonna crack you. Um. So for any of our Chinese audience out there, I got to play some poker with uh, a pretty famous Chinese musician. His name is Wang Feng um, last year. And just one hand that really stood out to me is, I think I like four or five bet jammed Kings for probably 150, 200 big blinds. He snaps me off. The board runs out seven, six, five, four, whatever. And I look at it and I'm like, wow, I'm super safe. Like I, proudly turned my hand over. He looks at it for 20 seconds and then flips over two eights like it was just the most obvious call of his life. Uh, <laughs> so not only did he manage to win the pot, he also managed to slow roll me. Uh, and this was for like money that meant a lot to me. Um, it did yeah, mean a lot to him though. That's the thing. No. Like, he's playing for fun. He's a recreational yes. player having yeah. fun. And he's like, yeah, I just beat this girl with pocket eights. She's like, she thinks I've got like pocket jacks or queens or uh, something. And um but yeah that that's pretty brutal especially but uh you know that that's that's the thing you got to go over your gut the chinese players are very superstitious and sometimes it works in their favors and sometimes it doesn't but you got to be willing to hang on for the right and they play for some big big stakes over there yes yeah every single chinese player that ever comes here who's played in china just immediately remarks on how small the game is and i think the other day we were playing like two four hundred um in ivy's room in aria and one of my friends who's swung eight figures in Bakura is just like, wow, why does everyone have so few chips on the table? Meanwhile, <laughs> everyone's sitting around with 100K. Yeah. Speaking uh, of eights. <laughs> pocket eights. They're the best hand right now. It's Chris Rudolph. He defended the big blind. Cami style, man, he's opening eight six off soon again. It's pretty, pretty aggressive. Turns the two pair. I think with that turn card, I don't think Chris Rudolph's going to put a single extra chip in this pot, and I'd imagine, right? Because under the gun opens, he's going to have an ace so much, isn't he? I mean, the other thing is it's like very draw heavy. Uh, so I definitely wouldn't blame him if he somehow found a way to put four chips into the okay. pot. And uh, I think, but yeah, I th you guys were on the same page. It's like, you know, this is a chip leader. He's got some random spades, some, uh, I don't know. Random spades, <laughs> king queen, <laughs> cards as well for sure. Um, but yeah, kind of like exactly what Cami has here. They're gonna have the ace of hearts a lot when they have hearts. Um, but yeah, I like I like calling turn folding over. It seems like a pretty standard play to me. Okay, this should be a little bit interesting because it's the number two in chips. No more till he's got pocket jacks. Chip leader's got pocket fives, and chip leader's been aggressive. Uh, I hope he just calls here up to two fives and not just go crazy and just jam it. Man, imagine if No More Till had like 30 big blinds. I feel like Cami style 100% be three bet jamming those two fives into it. So good thing it's a fun to look at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Um, something else I'm really curious about, if anyone knows anything about this, is I wonder how much experience the Austrian players have with one another. Um, something that I've seen a lot is just often players from one country are just actually friends uh, and yeah, they have a um, lot of history these guys probably do have enough wow hold on so cami style check called a flop c bet leads pot wow. on the turn when he turns the open in the straight throw gets two jacks to fold uh, i'm saying look cami style plays a little bit differently but i like his aggression it's relentless it's crazy and there's huge page ups he's got the winning style now if if those gg squad members were able to preview the first i don't know 30 minutes of this final table i think they all would pick cami style and drop all these other regs out there these regs are 
They're getting beat up right now. Chris Rudolph's down in chips. I, I think Ansu Fati's probably down in chips. Uh, the, just a matter of time before they all lose their chips. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm definitely very impressed with Cami so far. When I saw their hand where they had like a jack nine, turn to nine, and then mm-hmm. go for the check raise, um, that came off just way too aggressive to me uh, initially. And it, the odds Cami was getting just seemed insane. I think in the final table betting odds, um, he was only getting like 2.5 to one. Uh, but mm-hmm. after seeing how he's played, he's doing a very good job of chipping up. And even if he makes one little mistake, loses 15, 20 million, uh, maybe one of these pots in the future. But if he keeps chipping up over and over again, it's like free rolling uh, some bluffs in the future. So it'd be quite interesting to see because he's he's got a clear chip lead, right? Like sometimes when you got a chip lead of just like 10 million more than the other guys, like you're not that scary. But when you got 2x the stack, they they are really scared of you and, and they will make definitely making some big, big folds here and there. Looks like Molinelli did uh, pick up that last little pot there. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely think we just have a lot more room to maneuver when we have a 2x the next stack. Uh, if the stacks are pretty similar, like you said, um, and we lose a big one, we can go from chip lead to a short stack very quickly. Uh, but we can literally afford to double second place up. Um, <laughs> we don't want to, though. No. So just because we can doesn't mean we should, right? Well, let's take a look here. It's the chip leader free betting, the second place guy again. Well, he was second place, no more tilt. He's he's being very aggressive. At, this is the right play to do if you're the chip leader. If you're sec- if the second place guy's gonna keep opening, put no resistance in, uh, you just gotta relentlessly three bet him. Nano, I just feel like such a fraud the third or fourth time I three bet. The more I three bet, like the higher, I guess, my hand threshold becomes for three betting because I mm-hmm. feel like I'm just about to get punished. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I agree with you. The problem, the thing is, if my opponent, even though he sometimes they know what I'm up to, they still sometimes just still knit it up because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of these guys. I believe no more tilt only has 3.5 K in GG of poker when he's five recall correctly. So these pay jumps are, are very, very significant. Imagine he makes a play in just four bets, like 15 million his opponent, five at jams. Cause he actually wakes up a base King or something big, right? Right. He holds, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he had a, a good sh- chance of getting like a top four guaranteed into like a, maybe a top seven now. And that's, that would be a very big disaster. So we got to respect the ICM because of how many entries were in this event, how much is for first place. Um, like, I know you want to resist, right? You're like, oh, man, I don't want to get run over by these guys. But, oh, my God, this is nasty, right? Top two pair. But the thing is, it's middle position, and it's an un- 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 unseeable two pair, right? Like, you don't put yes. a guy on queen eight yeah. in this position. This is ridiculous. I don't think we should ever have this hand here. Uh, but with an ante and with Chip Lee, I'm sure we can come up with some justification. Yeah, he's probably thinking more like he's up against Ace Queen or King Queen or something, not the Queen Eight. Uh, the King of Spades on the turn brings an over back for a flush draw. Actually, a good card for Cammy in the sense that he can represent bluffs very well here, right? Like the Jack Ten, the Ace Jack, the Ace Ten, the two Spades. That's true. He, get- he definitely can. He might get called again, but it just depends on how scared his opponent is right now. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is uh, the king does hit our flop betting range a mm-hmm. lot and a lot more than it hits our opponent calling range. Exactly. So um, I don't know. It's it's a big bet, but when we flop top pair, I don't know. I like to just fold. I fold think it. in when the cash game, comes. The mm-hmm. standard would be to call this turn bet because of how many extra draws there are and how strong your hand is and, you know, the king improves your opponent, like, et cetera, right? But it goes to show that we know the chip leader has been aggressive, right? Everyone knows this, I think, at this point, but they still are backing down. They're putting a little bit of resistance, but they're not putting enough. In that sense, I like just being relentless with cami style like you know you see that guy raising every hand and you're complaining about it at the live table but then you do nothing about it you're hoping someone else yeah. takes care of them yeah uh i used to make a point of just re-raising the person whoever they were and if we flip for stacks we flip for stacks now i'm the one who sits back 
kind of sits on my hands and wait, waits for Kings and aces. So, and then they got pocket eights and it's, <laughs> uh, you know, the biggest uh, game you played in a while and they're, they're from China and just roll it, slow roll. Uh, you. If he didn't do it so nonchalantly after taking 20 seconds to flip over his hand, uh, I think I would have been mad, uh, but with how much fun he was having, what can I say? Oh, yeah. He's a pretty big name player. Uh, let's see, Molinelli here. He's got the top pair, not top pair, the top nutted unpaired hand. I don't know what the, I got the <laughs> phrase all wrong, but that's what I wanted to say. I was curious to see where you were going to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> the back door, the nutted back doors, right? The back door, flush draw nut. Absolutely. The back door, straight draw nut. <laughs> there we go. Now you're learning. Okay. <laughs> He's got one. I knew we get there. Oh. Thoughts on turn. Do we bet again? Yes, we've picked up equity and we have ace high. Uh, and also, I think it's just a good spot to apply pressure. It's a little confusing how much we bet, but maybe six million setting up for a river jam. Uh, or we can just give up and check. The reason I don't think he bet the turn is because of how shallow his opponent's stack yes. is. He's got a very yeah. check jamble hand. So say his opponent has like a king 10, a king nine, he might just jam the turn because it's too much in there. I think if his opponent had, say, five million more chips, he probably would have bet the turn. But it would be a usually you would want to bet. You fold out mm -hmm. a lot of like eights or seven X's, right? Right. Um yeah. and, and stuff like that. But uh you saw Chris Rudolph there actually turn his hand into a bluff. And those are the two Austrian players that uh just going at it. Yeah, uh, something I really enjoy about this final table. Uh, very underrated are their player profile <laughs> pictures. Um, All right, why? Taxi Tell driver. Me. Taxi driver with him driving golf cart. Perfect. <laughs> um, and then Chris Rudolph. Just the cute little, you know, hearts on his cheeks. Who is that? Do you know like who it. that person is? I have no clue who that is. I Is that? That's not actually Chris, right? I think I Googled him and no, doesn't. Yeah, I'm almost certain it's not. But who cares about that? It's two aces for Cammy Stout, a chip leader, running like a god, playing oh, aggressive. No, he's about to knock out the cash game pro, the cocky T pick, Ansu Fati, thirty-one. Just fold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Space. Space. Jack. Ooh, there's a Jack. Wow. Jack. Jack, and nothing else. Can he hit Is the Is it a jack? face card? No. Nope. Not. He's out in seventh place for $39,295 USD. Um, probably a little bit disappointing, but he's probably got to feel good that at least he got those two easy pay jumps very early in and, you know, feel a little bit more confident. Yeah, no, I guarantee you nothing feels good after busting. <laughs> I love that you're congratulating them on just like a big I'm, score. I'm congratulating <laughs> them. You know what? Like that's, that's what the announcers do. They congratulate people to put them on extra tilt. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, I'm here for the salt, the blood. You know, that, that's what I like to see. Uh, but I'm, I'm still congratulating them on their seventh place finish of beating, I don't know, 7,000 people. But you couldn't beat these final six people. So GG. To Ansu Fati. I prefer the GG Ansu Fati. Congratulations to everyone else at the table for lottery. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely don't want any congratulations after uh, nah. cashing a tournament unless I win it. Then I hope acceptable. I get a commentate on your hands one day and I'll be like, congratulations uh, on that beat you took for fifth place. Lynn, that was that was great and i guess you'll never talk to me ever again after that but you know what it will be worth it <laughs> i want to be one of those people that celebrates after busting and, and like third fourth fifth whatever who i actually am though is the person that screams into my pillow for a solid five minutes <laughs> out of just pure rage and frustration just did feels you, like we you, got so close after that cash game session with with the two kings against the two eights what happened when you went back to your room did, did you scream at the pill or did you No. so nano um historically i am actually a very good loser but an absolutely terrible winner um i have a bit of a chip on my shoulder about being like a young asian girl and like people already look at me with those like sad pitying eyes every time i lose a pot so uh yeah 
I definitely try to keep a stiff upper lip. And then like after two minutes of grieving and mourning for my chips, I try to crack a joke. So everyone knows it's okay to like resume conversation. Lynn's right. not going to kill herself. It's always like, dead quiet, right? After it's loses so this awkward. Pot, this um, pot, like, hmm, we're not yeah, talking. it's the worst. So uh, that hand was actually funny enough where I just laughed about it. Um, probably ended up playing for a few more hours that night. Uh, and at that point, our game had been running long enough where uh, I was finally done, like having every single dollar of my net worth on the table. So um, <laughs> I, being able to just absorb it a little better was nice. <laughs> I guess it was like that hand is so ridiculous on the reveal that you couldn't be too yeah. mad about it. But we'll finish that story yes. later. We've got a five minute break here. Guys, watch the GG wildcard cam. You can win some prizes. Uh, they'll tell you how to do it, the moderators. We'll talk to you guys soon. The GG Poker wildcard cam. Ah, uh, yes, back at it again. This is the GG Poker wildcard cam. Looking back at some classic hands on GG, featuring some titans of the game. And Brent, speaking of titans, at the 25K World Series of Poker bracelet event, the 25K heads up. Jake the Snake Dimler oh. against Victor Malinowski. It's limitless. It's limitless. It's Schindler. It's Jake. Mm. It's Winter. Mm. Here we go. Two of the best to ever get it done. And we get to guess Jake Schindler's hand, Jeff? That is correct. Does Schindler have the ace 10 off? Does he have the seven deuce of spades, the queen 10 of hearts? Or is it perhaps the queen jack of clubs, A, B, C, or D? Let us know as you watch this hand play out. We know that Limitless has flopped top pair. Let's see what Jake the Snake does on the flop. A little down bet, I think. I think we've got some sort of crazy equity. I think we might have Queen Jack of Clubs. I'm, I'm leaning there, Queen Maybe. Jack of Clubs. So you think it's the flush draw, you think it's the gut shot, you think it's the pair of jacks as well. I do, I think he's got the whole world seemingly in his hands just trying to get there. And he's facing one of the best in the world who checks on the turn. Schindler ramps it up a little bit here, betting 12,500. Oh my goodness gracious, I, I'm going with it. Lock it in, D, write it on the screen. Choice D, Queen Jack of Clubs. I think he turned the stone cold Nutter Butters with the Queen Ten of Hearts. We do see a third club on the river. Lock me in, Mr. Hanks, for the Queen Ten of the Hearts. Give me choice C. You got it. Well, I know I've got the goods. How about all of it? How about all of it? How about every single chip? back to the final table. Radar holds things. Oh my God. Michael Otamo is the best.
What up, guys? We are back. Hopefully, you guys got your answers in for the GG wildcard cam. We're going to reveal the answer to that at the end of the stream, so you guys got to watch it throughout. If you guys missed that, I believe there's another opportunity to enter when the next break happens. I don't know all the specifics, but you can talk to the mods in the chat. Now, if you're coming in from Twitch, uh, we are here on YouTube, so do subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up, smash it, whatever those uh, youngins say out there on the YouTube videos <laughs> these days. I don't know, uh, but smash that like button and enjoy the show. GG Poker releases a lot of content, and uh, we do the 10K Super Millions every single week, and they're actually going to have Super Millions Week coming up which is going to have a $10,000 uh, $10, buy-in with a $10 million guarantee for one of the events and a $25,000 buy-in of all the big names in there. I'm pretty sure Chris Rudolph plays those tournaments too, so it'll be really cool to see. Um, but let's get going. Ace, 10, suit, ace, King, Lin. This is a... So, even though you, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, I, I know you're going to say something, but did you just see this flat call of ace, king, or, or is it just me? I did. No, I, uh, apparently that's just a new thing that we're doing here. You know, <laughs> when we have, uh, and to be fair, they are deeper where I think I see a bit more justification. Also, if we know that this is a big stack who likes to play aggressively, it makes much more sense. Um, I don't really mind it so much off 35, 40 big lines, but, uh, earlier the hand that we saw with 25 when we were going over the player profiles was weird. Yeah. Yeah. I think, odd. um, in this hand, it is number one and number two chips going at it. So he doesn't want to accidentally get it in against like two queens or two jacks or something and potentially bust out a tournament. Because ICM implications would say that a pro yeah. needs to be quite cautious here, right? Um, everyone is guaranteed $52,000, 70K pay jumps. Ace 10 suited is going for another barrel. And this is a tough call to make of Ace King. Uh, because say you call and you're actually wrong, you're going to have 30. Three million chips potentially after this hand yeah it's it's pretty unfortunate that we uh well i don't know if it's unfortunate but we came in second in chips um so we definitely don't want to go out uh behind really any other players um but i guess one of the problems is when you do these flat calls and we see this pretty regularly you let the other guy have a chance to steal the pot from you. Absolutely. You're going to play a little bit more passively because that's why you play passively pre-flop to begin with. Right. And you lose pots that you shouldn't have lost, right? Because if Molinelli three bet the hand, he probably wins it pre-flop. If he doesn't, he wins it on a flop with a flop bet. Mm -hmm. um, so personally, I always feel like a little... I don't feel very good, right? When I lose a pot that I shouldn't have lost, I, should, I just sometimes just... Sure. Do that. I just... I just jam it pretty yeah. You know what? Can't get, can't <laughs> I like get jamming it, it actually. Yeah, I actually, I really like jamming it um, versus specifically Cammy. If we think that they're, they're going to show up with some four bet bluffs, maybe we go ahead and just let them. Um, but yeah, this whole ICM thing is still very weird to me. Uh, yeah. I'm a cash game player. I just play for chips. They are all worth the same to me. I don't really overthink it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually think jamming has a lot of merit i know it sounds like a lot because you're number two in chips like 40 big blinds or whatever but you stop your opponent from making a uh, a four bed jamming that's a really good nice. point yeah. yeah because we're also not ecstatic about getting ace king in um mm -hmm. even if we do think our opponent is four bit bluffing sometimes like we would love to just go ahead and pick up the chips right here and right now yeah um but yeah, no, I think I did interrupt you earlier. It seemed like you really wanted to say something, Lynn. What were you going to say? Uh, like many other thoughts I have, you know, it's long since escaped my mind. This is a train of thought going all over the place. It just never stops, you know. And I, then I just jump on, stop, say something. You, it just gets derailed and it never to be found again. <laughs> Um, Pat Manuel from the chat is asking, is the chip leader going to win again? Nano, what do you think? Well, obviously, he's playing the best. <laughs> it's funny. Just enough, because he's playing the most hands does not mean he's playing the best, Nano. To be fair, I actually do think he is playing the best. No, uh, I agree. Um, he's not as known as the Austrian player. I don't know, just because there's three of them, you know what I mean? But like, he's using the chip lead how he should be using it and it's working really really well let's see yeah. no more tilt's got two jacks again 
Oh, two sevens, open folds under the gun. A little nitty or is this the ICM correct? It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> realistically, juices through fives. I see no problem with mucking. Um, I guess maybe sixes, but when we get to sevens, it just seems like unless we have the clairvoyance that no more tilt just has jacks, I'm not really sure what we're doing here. <laughs> well, maybe it's because like if you start folding sevens, well, then I guess I'm starting to fold eights and eventually I'm at nines, which is starting to get pretty <laughs> premium, you know, like when you start open 49s, that just means you entered the wrong tournament, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like the trade of thought we went down there. Uh, <laughs> Wait, extrapolate it. <laughs> see. So interesting. Actually, CCW hasn't played many hands at all. He's got 11% VPIP, but uh, he decides to open this one. I like it because because he hasn't played in the hand in a while, they're just going to think he's a big knit. So it's a pretty yeah. decent hand to, to go for a little steal. Yeah, 100%. Um, Nano, do you tilt? No, oh, of course. And how do you tilt? Uh, well, I just go for the highest game I can play and just lose a lot of money, you know? Like... I've I've played my fair share of tilted heads up matches and three handed matches. I've played against guys like True Teller heads up for like lost That's hundreds of hundred k. I played them many times actually. The story was like so in the beginning he I don't know if you know he was a he was a cap player. Do you know what cap is? No, I have no clue what that that means. Cap cap poker is uh, null and hold them still, but the difference is you are only allowed to play uh, twenty big blinds in a single hand. So okay. it's essentially short stack poker. And True Teller won millions of dollars playing this uh, before he learned how to play all the other games and no one to hold them. I was a no limit player and I, you know, was doing very well. I decided to basically we had some kind of like unagreed agreement, like you know, <laughs> unspoken agreement that we, I would play him in cap and he would play me in no one to hold him. And he eventually was better than well, he was already better at me in cap and became much better to me in no one to hold him very fast. And, sure. He has a hundred thousand my dollars and it's clearly turned into millions uh, at some point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I've played my matches for sure. Got it. Love it. Do you tilt live? And if so, do you visibly I'm, tilt? I'm always or just with your chips live because okay. it's Love freaking it. so it's like, you know, you, you lose one hand. I'm I'm a, I'm that fish at the table, right? I'm like always counting my stack. I'm like, I've got less than what I have before. Oh, I need no. to get back to where we were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To win the tournament, you always have to have more chips eventually, right? You gotta yes. have all the chips possible. So if I'm going backwards, or well, what am I doing? I either need a plus I, yeah. now or double. I treat cash games uh, very similarly, and it feels the worst when i've been stuck the entire time finally break even decide i want to win just a little bit of profit and then my stack just takes a plunge all the way down so there's <laughs> nothing more depressing well no more tilt like he is down in chips but i haven't seen him actually play tilted at all i feel like he's just kind of let down a little bit so he's not on tilt yet he's just hanging in there um he's got two tens in this spot against potentially a king queen actually taxi driver's v pip is so low it's just seven percent but it makes sense because he's folding pocket sevens under a gun right but even though he's playing tight i still think i just jammed the two tens with the stack size what are your thoughts on that uh we are the two shortest stacks i wouldn't mind flatting actually um, all right well he agrees you China, China and China connection here. Okay. You guys understand each other very, very well. I'm actually uh, his coach, Nano. Uh, in case you didn't know. <laughs> no wonder. Because there's like all these superstars at the final table. During final table oh. betting, like I'm gonna, I, I think the Chinese guy is gonna take it, get it done. No more tilt. Uh, he's ahead. Yeah, gotta represent. <laughs> he's ahead right now. He's got he's on the 996 rainbow flop. Seems like a mandatory bet when the pre-flop raiser checks to you. Uh two opponents. He goes for a big bet. You know, Cammy Style's in big trouble here because if he hits a 10, his opponent has a full house. All righty. I think when you bet that bigger hand is like rather face up, um, this jack shouldn't be hitting our opponents much. I definitely wouldn't mind seeing oh, jam. This is going to be very interesting. Checked. I think Cammy Style is going to jam because he saw his opponent bet this flop and check. He is yeah. going to jam and no more tilt. Oh my 
I mean, what are we saying? I I feel like we just don't represent enough hands. Like we have nine X and that's literally it. Like, I don't think we should have many. I don't think Jack's jam for one. Um, And then we just shouldn't be arriving at the river with too many Queens. Uh, The problem is no more till really only beats one hand and it's seven, eight. The problem is he's holding two tens, so he yeah, the ten true. eights, the ten sevens, the little straight draws there. Yeah, that's a the very nine point. would play this hand the same way. Just check call to flop because that's it's true. Taxi driver in the hand, and with how many hands Cammy's playing, I think they probably just have too many nines. Um, and we realistically should just have some better hands to call. Uh, we should have some nines that check back turn, and I don't know if we can just call those on the river um if we defend enough hands if we do that but uh no no what do you think he's going to do do you think he is I going tell to you that what click the no call more toast thinking about actually is i think he wants to fold but he's thinking about cami style who's been playing back at him throughout this final table so far it might come into play where he's like you know what i think you're bullying me one more time no. and he, he potentially makes a call I think he should fold, even though he obviously he's got the best hand. We see the whole cards up, but generally speaking, he probably should be folding. There's no obvious flush draw out there. A nine nine six. I think I agree with you. Changes things a lot, but it's not. It's rainbow. He literally beats just seven eight, but his opponent has seven well, eight. Sixteen combinations of seven eight, and then with two nines out there. Um, and I imagine our opponent three bets some of his nine X, his suited nine X. Um, I don't I know. Mean, I'm not sure how many nines he's A little bit wishful with. thinking about it, you know, assuming his opponent's going to squeeze the, the nine X a little bit. I know you're reaching because that's what I do too, right? Like when you're trying to think of hands you can be, you start putting in some hands that probably aren't really there, but in your head, it's okay. Uh, but oh, no, yeah. I don't show up on the river and uh try to figure out what i should do i show up on the river knowing exactly what i'm going to do and then coming up with all the reasons and the justification as for why i'm doing it <laughs> yeah tough spot he folds the best hand no more tilt loses again to cami style cami style is relentless 173 million i don't fault that play at all but that's gotta hurt when he sees it later yeah absolutely yeah it's pretty unfortunate um <laughs> Yeah, that's it's so funny, right? Because on that flop, it was a 996 rainbow. We see two tens. We know the 7 8 wants to hit a 10, but it doesn't really want to hit a 10. And somehow the 7 8 wins. Doesn't that seem a little bizarre to you? Uh, a little bit. Um, but with that said, I believe people willing to put in chips with bad hands always deserve to win. <laughs> Nana. <laughs> Do you think that no more, whoa, king nine suited three bang? Look, see, that's what I'm saying. Nine X squeezes sometimes, Nano. (laughs) You got me. (laughs) You know what? Everything I said was just playing out wrong. Um, I do want to ask you, on the 996 jack was the turn. Should no more tilt potentially jammed his last 13 big blinds on the turn, or was that be too reckless? I mean, for the same reason that we're not calling River, I guess we're not jamming turn. With that said, if that's me. Um, There's merit uh, to it, though, right? But then it, it does kind of look but like no, my opponent right. nine also. Yeah, because we bet so big on the flop. We bet 70 or 80% on the flop. Uh, multi-way, which just looks so strong. So. Yeah, I agree. I guess you, I but... check. And yeah, the big bet is, I think, is the important point because I think uh, well, before I finish that, I think there's going to be action. I think Taxi Driver's only been jamming on Cami style, but Molinelli picks up two jacks in the small blind. Yeah, I think I we see like, Taxi flat a lot, but well, not when jamming. he takes for 20 seconds. Jam. Well, what does Don't, Molinelli do now? He's got to go up to two jacks, right? Like, he's seen Taxi Driver with three bet jam on Cami style three or four times now. He's got as opposed to playing 20 big blinds, I don't know. Have you ever folded jacks for 20 big blinds? Hell, you probably get it in for 100 big blinds. I do too. I so absolutely like, get it in for 100. Maybe 200, depending on how I'm feeling. Exactly. <gasps> Two jacks is in. Ace five is out. And seven doesn't have a choice, I think. Yeah, there we go. Exactly. Big Can Taxi find names. seven? Ooh, Ooh, he's or need two some... more clubs. Nope. Wishful thinking. Two outs. That's 
peel a three side. Ooh. Ooh, it can oh, be a seven. No. Nope. It is not a seven, it's an eight. Fortunate. So, so close. So, so close. Gigi, the taxi driver, all he did this final table actually was just three bed jam on Cami style, but he did get a reasonable amount of pay jumps. He's cashed for $52,000. Yeah. Wow. Everyone else gets a 17K pay jump. Congratulations to Taxi Driver, in my opinion, Lynn. Uh, it's actually a, still a phenomenal performance. I know he's a pretty big uh, MTT player, but uh, sometimes someone's got to go out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've also been dying to see some of these Austrians bust, so makes my day. <laughs> hey, at the start of the final table, I said Molinelli's got the best C. Well, having yeah. said that, I, I don't really care about that because he just smooth called two kings. Number two in chips versus the chip leader. His game plan really is smooth call everything because he wants those short stacks to re-jam on him. I mean, no, he doesn't mind getting two kings in with the chip leader, but the truth is the chances the chip leader just getting in pre-flop against such a big stack is small anyways. There's yeah, more value exactly. in letting these 20 big blind guys just do something stupid. Yeah, it's that. It's also if our chip leader is just a spaz ball who, you know, finds a lot of bets and raises with hands that they maybe shouldn't have that uh allows oh, us to make some more chips yeah like but this is exactly why i just hate slow playing hands um <laughs> i hate showing up on boards like this where we have a hand that looked sick pre-flop but somehow we've shown up on the turn and it feels like two paper napkins it's just not a good feeling it's a pot size bet from cami style betting on such a crazy board Molinelli folds two kings. This cabbie style is amazing. I can't believe he got Molinelli fold two kings there. This this guy deserves to win. I don't know. It's only five. There's still five players left, but I'm loving cabbie style. The number one player at this found table by far. Respect the oh chip leader yo love it <laughs> love this shit talk after he wins a pot. This is what I want to see. That is. That is wow. He has he's pulled off so many bluffs uh, post flop, and he's put in some so many three bet bluffs. Uh, this guy's using the translation built into the GG client. I, I'm not sure if you were able to catch what uh, Molina's uh, chat real fast, but uh, insane. Like I, I'm surprised you're not like mad about these two kings somehow losing that pot. I think that's the problem with, um, and this is why, this is another reason why I don't flat big hands pre-flop is because when I flat at pre-flop, I feel like I've just so underrepresented my hand that I have to get it in post. And I have been that idiot that just like can't fold an over pair to save her life, no matter how bad the board is for me. Um, that's a really scary board. Uh, the other problem is we can't really improve on the river. So look, we tried our best, we lost. We just picked up a bunch of chips and now I don't want to give them back. The, the funny thing is Molinari is like, I only invested four big blinds in that pot. Um, yeah. Before we finish off that uh, statement, Molinari, three bet jams to King Jackson. See, he actually has a game plan against everyone else. He's playing his normal game, but against Cammy style, he's like a completely different player. Because he I think that is actually a really good. Right. I mean, he respects ICM, but also he maybe just thinks Cammy is like a little bit more loose, a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying uh, how... Niccolo is playing, even if it doesn't mean that he wins every single pot. Um, yeah. I like this jam. We have 10 big blinds, ace 10. This is I good. Mean, We're chipping up. Two, I still can't get over the two kings. I can't believe this guy somehow won the pot without improving with the ace six, obviously, which is really, really crazy. Um, looks like there's going to be <laughs> potentially all in confrontation here. Molinelli might even jam but he might probably min raise i think i feel like he's I think not molinelli is too good to jam yeah, yeah that's i think that's very reasonable um i think no more tilt gets to get away from it if ccw decides to put in a three bet uh what gets uncomfortable is if he flats but then i think we have a pretty good spot seems like the easiest just... jam of ace queen though right you got 20 big blinds against the second place guy it seems like a mandatory jam from the small blind if he doesn't it'd be pretty due to inexperience you're right. Yeah. No more tilt with two sixes has to fold this, in my opinion. And before he stuffs all his chips in somehow. It might um, be. 
He's on tilt. No, he doesn't tilt though. He's not, he's gonna fold. No more tilt. I don't know why you take so long to fold. Like these these are some valuable time bank seconds where we don't really want to be lighting our time on fire if we know what we're going to do. I believe um, no more tilt is one of the less experienced players based on the GG. No, you're movie. right. So yeah. it's understandable. It is kind of tricky. Um, two sixes yeah. though, which has to be a fold because CCW will be obviously rejamming all the bigger <laughs> pairs, just flipping at best, really. Um, um, Pat is asking Lynn, how did your date with Jeff Platt go? Uh, unfortunately, Jeff and I haven't actually ever gone on a date. We did go for a pretty massive group dinner though, which he left early for somehow. Um, I think we polished off like seven bottles of wine amongst seven people. Jeff leaves and then the rest of us continue drinking probably another five or six bottles. By the end of the night, uh, a water fight was going on. So a water fight. Is this at the <laughs> water park or is this at the, the, the dining table? No, no, no. This is at, a, at the dinner table. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised you needed that clarification. <laughs> Yeah, needless to say, a lot of drinks were consumed. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the two um, games is still so bizarre. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about it. Like, what about? Do you like the turn fold? It was a pot size bet. Seven yes. six, five three. Yeah, I really like it. That's such a shit board for us, Nano. Like, what are we supposed to do? We can't just I, make I, believe and like pretend fold. that our over pairs. No, I, I would make believe. And the reason I say that is when my <laughs> opponent pot size bet the seven, six, five, three, I really just don't think. Oh, well, anyways, I won't, I'll finish that statement later. Ace eight's going to jam here into two eights. Eights is very lucky for an APL hand. I'd be surprised if that ace comes. Very, very. Ace. Funny. Ace. <laughs> you could jack. Ace. Jack sure. Ace. Yeah. Uh, ace. I don't want to see it. No. Not a five. It's not going to do it. Well, our second place, start of day, second place guy, no more tilt, finishes in fifth place for 70,000 USD, 452,000 RMB. It's, it's an impressive score for a guy who doesn't have that much earnings. Um, I feel like he, you know, he did get bluffed off those two tens, but I actually don't fault him. Uh, I think the eight seven play was really the only hand he beat there, and his opponent happened to have that hand. I think he played all right. Um, you know, took some spots, yeah. just played a little tight, but that's all right. He got a big score. Hats off to him. Absolutely, I think he played great. Um, I love his username. I might actually change my username to No More Tilt in hopes that it reminds me to. Yeah, right. You guessed never, it. It wouldn't work tilt. for you. It just wouldn't work. We we all know it's not going to work. It's like I will continue uh, to tilt. It's a better screen name for you. Yeah, uh, I think tilting actually works really well sometimes. Um, it's it's funny how many chips I managed to put in with a hand that can somehow become the best hand by the river. Um, but yeah, my, my, be the best hand by the river. Okay. As long as you see more importantly, cards. every hand can be the best hand when all of your opponents fold their hands, uh, which is what really matters. Technically that's not true because the best hand is actually the best mate hand. It's just that you won the, you, you stole the pot, right? It's not, is it the best hand? Mm. If you've got high card three, not really. I mean, I think the best hand is the last person with a hand and whether it's a player, showdown or but not the best hand. <laughs> <laughs> not sure about the best player. Uh, my style when I'm tilted is to play 100% of hands and triple off 100% of hands. Uh, <laughs> I see. Well, I mean, definitely a... not the best player when uh, when that happens. On to this hand real fast. It looks like the ace four. I, I might I missed one stream. I'm not sure if it was a triple barrel or a two barrel. I feel like it's probably a two street type of hand though. Ace four here. Um, Chris Rudolph's got middle pair. I think he knows his hand looks like what it is, but he's up against a strong opponent. So he's thinking about it like, oh, is it you trying to bluff me off what I have? On um, specifically this board, I think we can just call down with just our ace X. Um, unless we're thinking about turning our hand. hand into a bluff. Yeah, I, I think we can go ahead and muck this. Uh, the fact that we don't have a club is interesting. It makes us slightly more likely that our opponent has some flush draws that might have made it to the river and want to turn their hand into a bluff. Um, but yeah, I think I want to see, I, I see, I think I want to see Chris fold, uh, but this is 
kind of uh, what I was talking about earlier, where maybe some level of history comes in. Yeah. These two guys are most likely to have the most history of each other. They're both uh, bracelet winners on play big tournaments. And he does make the fold, does use a bit of time bank, but understandably. Uh oh. Um, It's like the two most (laughs) Chinese hands going, potentially going at it two eights and two fours. The luckiest hand in China and the unluckiest hand in China, right? Like this is just destiny. And the eight four there on the top, right? It's like holding each other's out. Actually, there's no fours. I mean, there's no fours. Yeah. (laughs) What? There's no fours. What do you want to see? Oh, well, Chris didn't know that, unfortunately. Well, GG to Chris Rudolph in fourth place. There's no way he can win this hand. Does Nico? Okay, I was gonna say, does Nico ever fold? And I guess the answer's no. Uh, chop outs? No. These are nope. fake percentages here. Okay, these yeah, are not real GG. percentages because he's got a zero percent chance of winning. Chris Rudolph, the big name player, is out in fourth place for ninety three thousand one hundred eighty four dollars USD, which is six hundred and three thousand renminbi. So everyone is guaranteed. Six digits USD, 124,263. It's a 40K pay jump for one more survival. And CCW is in the babe line of Ace Jack, looking to reshove on Cami style as Ace Eight. 20 big blinds effective. I like it. Um, at this point, we don't have any other short stacks that last. We kind of need to double. Uh, otherwise, we're just oh, bleeding down chips anyways. It's a big, big call. And Ace Jack is in dominating position. Needs to dodge the eight or some chop cards. Yeah, definitely. A king, queen, ace, four. Six isn't going to do it. Holds. Nice play, man. I haven't, I've kind of forgot about our Brazilian guy with a bunch of random letters on his screen name. You know, he just clicked some buttons and he made his screen name, but uh, he's hanging in there and he's actually guaranteed a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would love to see CCW actually run up a stack. Uh, and I think hopefully he's in prime position to do so. All right, so we got three guys here. You have, you didn't see too much of CCW, but do you have a what do you think is going to happen do you think cami style is like just too dominant throughout this final he's going to ship it or is it going to be molinelli who where he gets a heads up obviously doesn't have anyone else to come back uh, no no one else to outlast he's maybe he just starts to play his a game yeah so to go back uh ccw was actually the player who jammed 2x pot with queen jack on like 9ax um so he's definitely capable of making some moves i i wouldn't mind seeing a bit more of that with that said cammy has direct position on him uh the player that i think really has a chance at taking the win from cammy is nicolo um being very experienced and then also just having a lot more chips to play around with. I think he has what 70, 80 big blinds now. I'm I'm really interested in seeing how his uh his game and his approach changes. Well, he's got two nines here. Now this becomes a premium in three-handed play. Um, oftentimes you'll see this three bed and just potentially just get it in even four to 40 big blind stack. Uh, let's see what he's going to do here with the two nines. He just calls and he flops a set. Nice. Nothing for CCW. Um, um, I'm interested to see if we bet here. I think with specifically fours to see that or not to see bet. That is the question, Lynn. It's a tricky one. I think with the four hearts, I almost always see bet. I like four that. Hearts, yeah. Um, I'm not so sure. I think it's it's never bad to bet though because you oftentimes will just fold out random equity unless they start floating you with some like a uh, high card hands like a um, yeah. like jack ten backdoor kind of. But story. even then, if they want to put in more chips, uh, facing a large bet with just two overs, like by all means, be my guest. Um, nice smooth call of the two nines there. Uh, just figures, you know, if opponent has an ace, I don't want him to let him get away with it, uh, you know, on the further street. Plus, if he's bluffing, he's got no chance. CCW. He's been tight. So if he he might just get have the wrong time. He's like, you know what? YOLO, let's just go for it. Uh, I hope not, because this hand has got no equity. Let's check. I was gonna say our hand is just has no incentive to I bet agree. the turn. Um so some people are crazy, you know, but uh, I definitely would not be betting that 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 turn. 
two nine so I, I guess you just gotta bet now right like you see your opponent checks that turn you don't want to see some side check backs from like an ace deuce yeah that would be a that's another thing that I would like to see now that we're down three handers. I just want to see players get a little bit more aggressive about going for value bets, um, especially the ones that look kind of thin. Very, very big bet. And CCW is a little bit confused on why his opponent is choosing a very big bet. Does decide to fold be a small two fours? It's two fours after all. Yeah, I am infamous for leveling myself into a call just because I've seen a big bet. Um, doesn't matter if I have like bottom pair, ace high, king high, just can't win if you fold, you know. <laughs> it's like you went from pair to ace high, I'm like, okay, I understand. And then you go to, to king high, I'm like, all right, you're going to start to say queen high pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know how good it feels to call someone down with like jack high 10 high and be good nano have you ever tried it no i definitely am not i, I like to <laughs> hold on to my money you know like i don't like to get it right once every 100 times no <laughs> gotta that, live a little <laughs> gotta live a little bit we do have a free roll for you guys in the chat i know you guys love those free rolls that free roll starts in 10 minutes the password is what lynn likes to do call c-a-l-l call <laughs> Uh, then we've got 10 flip and go tickets. Talk to the mods in the chat if uh, you don't know how it works. Um, Oyvind Jansen asks, why such big sizing? I assume this is referring to when Nicolo had nines. Yes. Um, I think it's good to just go ahead and extract max value out of our opponent, uh, as well as I think it generates more folds um, in case we are bluffing. But uh, I think when we show up to that river, our opponent should be relatively size inelastic where um, they're either willing to call a big bet or not willing to call much of anything. Pretty much any hand that is an ASX just shouldn't really be thinking about a call anyways. Mm -hmm. So uh, going for max value, I think is the play. Let's see, so a bit, of, a bit, of, a bit of junk in this hand, three, five, seven deuce, seven deuces out, two sixes. I'd be kind of shocked if he raises. The reason I say that is he's been playing passable. He is going to raise. I guess things are different three-handed. But Mol Molinelli in general has been pretty passive against the chip leader. Um, yeah, so something else we've seen from Kami is like, Kami really has run good with his timing most of the time. Um, if he didn't, there's some chance he wouldn't be here anymore. But uh, I, I want to see Kami kind of keep a rein on his aggression. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's opening up the 10 nine of diamonds. I, I don't think he's going to start trying to fold his way to heads up. Like he's been relentless when there was nine people all the way down to these final three. Um, yeah. No, wow. Jack. Wow. Offsuit. Three betting the do garbage. Do we ever see a four bet jam? Ever. I don't think we do. We're more likely to see a flop. Oof. Oh, and it is trip seven. That's crazy. The random three bet against the flush draw. Zero chance all the chips goes in at some point. I mean, it's always going to go in. I don't know. <laughs> I, I said it's wrong, but you know what I meant. I was going to ask, what do you know that I don't? <laughs> um, I was just going to ask if CCW just open jams here. Uh, I don't think so. The hand's too strong. It's too strong to open jam. It would just be a bad player if he jammed the jack seven on the flop. I think Cammy jams. Some would argue that a bad it takes a bad player to three bet the Jack Seven offsuit. Nano. Yeah, there we go. Diamond on the turn and Cammy style. You know, Jack lucky. Seven, Ace Queen. Ooh, it's a face card. Could be a Jack. Is that a Jack? I think it, it is. is and jack. it is a wow. whole house. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Oh my God. Oh, what We're a all eater. Even. Yeah. No chip leader. We no longer have a chip leader. They're all even. They've got over 100 million, 50 big lines apiece. Wow. So to go back to that, what do you think of Cami's jam over the small bet? It definitely makes sense. It is Cami style. Cami style is to be aggressive. Um, I like the jam because if he can get his opponent to fold like a, a pair that's not a top pair, like say his opponent three bet like two eights, two sure. nines, they might fold that hand on this flop just thinking like, oh, I'm drawing, flipping or drawing dead practically. 
Um, he, he can get an ace king and ace jack to fold a reasonable amount of time. I think his play is definitely fine. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's not going to put his opponent on a seven, like even though he did have a seven, but yeah. unlikely. I don't think he expected it. Yeah, that makes complete sense. If he did um, your play, given, though, he would have won the four bet jam. Given how tight CCW was, has been playing, I definitely wouldn't expect them to show up with too many sevens. That's the thing. These guys, like, they know their image. They know they've been playing tight, and they know that they can make some plays here and, there and usually get away with it. Um, he did yeah, get a little absolutely. bit fortunate in that hand, but you know he's clearly a very thinking player. How much? Uh, that's a big bet from CCW. Where? Uh, 1.5x. Yeah, pretty ambitious. Um, when someone was talking about how, like, a 90% size was big earlier. I found that very amusing because as a cashing player, like sometimes you see someone who's just ripped five X on the river now. And I'm just there. Like, I have no clue what you're doing, but uh, that's a thing. It's always the Eastern Europeans too. It's weird. <laughs> well, so Cami style makes wow! the call. He's falling apart. Got oh faded by the 1.5 X over bet. Thought his opponent was on a draw. It's two pairs, and we got a new chip leader. CCW was the clear short stack in three-handed not too long ago. Cami style is falling apart. Yeah, CCW came in in seventh. To go from seventh to first uh, after outlasting that many people has to feel good. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't believe – I'm actually quite shocked that Cami style didn't win the 10-9 yeah. suited after he hit that turn card. I'm very surprised that Jack rolled off. I know, and I'm, I'm surprised he made that call. Just he's out loving himself. Maybe he's feeling a little heated, a little tilted potentially to make that last call. We are not too sure. Could have been a, a, a correct call, but uh, you can see, like after you make that call and lose, you can't be feeling too good. Someone Jack in the chat six. says, "Finally, that knit goes down." I'm not sure what <laughs> knit we're talking about. Uh, yeah. Cammy is doing his best to play at least fifty percent of hands. So, 48. credit where it's due. <laughs> um so Molinelli raised the limp with jack six obviously they're like you know what cammy style no longer a chip leader let's just try to punt him around cammy though still calls preflop with the king seven he's got king high on an ace three three flush draw makes the correct call beautiful play uh so nano this is a trick that i've learned um but when you always click call, you get to look like a genius sometimes. It's pretty sick. <laughs> I mean, but I do think the way he's playing his hand it is it's a pretty good read. He thinks his opponent would raise some garbage. It's pretty darn hard to multi-barrel the Jack-6 offsuit here. Um, I can't imagine. This I would one. love to see Cammy go for like a third, just like 7 million. Maybe. Um, Reasonable. Yeah, I think we give King High an opportunity to call down. Um, I guess the worst part is holding a king just makes it less likely your opponent has that King High to call down. So I don't mind his check. Um, let me get some cheaper showdowns. And he is now back towards the top. No, oh, dead even, even. second place. Very, very even, yeah. Yeah, no, do you know what I want to see? What do you want? Three way. All I want to see. <laughs> yes, that, that is exactly what I want to see. Spot on. Aces versus kings versus queens. Um, no, what I really want to see is I want to see a tournament with the seven deuce game somehow implemented. Uh, we play that in cash games so often, and it's just so much fun. You know, if there's one client to do it, it's GG Poker. They think of the most ridiculous games and they actually work, uh, like the Flip and Go, for example. I can't believe that, that the, it really does work. It's a brilliant idea. Um, you know, if they do happen to have a seven deuce game, look, how about this? You win a seven deuce, you know, you can show, always show your cards anytime. So if you show the seven deuce, you have to show the hand, right? Because you can't muck your seven deuce and, and yeah, get obviously. rewarded for it. So you yeah. show the seven deuce, which is very easy to do on a GG poker client. You just click a little button there. Then you maybe you get like a, I don't know, two big blinds from everyone's stack go straight yes. into your stack, or I don't know, That's whatever yes. amount of big blinds. Perfect. Exactly what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, I think With that some would just, crazy uh, animations. Is... I want like a waterfall chips 
forming into the middle and then they just kind of like go in this little <laughs> dragon motion towards you into your stack. Uh, Nano, I'm shocked they have you commentating and not on the design team. I love it. Love it already. <laughs> okay. So wow. Cami style is Cammy back is, to uh... black to going crazy. So what yes. happened in this hand was if you didn't catch it, it went check, check on the flop. He checked the turn. Its opponent spat the top pair and got check raised huge. This is a huge check raise, okay? So what I want Cammy to really think about, though, is just, like, in a spot like this, like, and hopefully Nicola was thinking the same thing, is, like, do we really play our value this way? Does he really go check, check raise? Um, and, and I would wager no a lot of the time. So I think then we're just very heavily weighted towards bluffs. Well, now that he's river at the six, he is going to check. I would be very yeah. curious if that weird card was like, I don't know, anything other than one of his paired cards, because I think he might even go for it. Um, a big bluff didn't work. Nice call from Molinelli. I think these two guys think he's crazy. Yes. <laughs> I was exact. I was going to say exactly that. Like more importantly, I would love to see these two guys adjust a little bit because it's clear that Cami is uh, really getting after it. It's a forty-one k pay jump from third to second place USD, and then it's a fifty-five thousand dollar pay jump. So these are very, very big. And Cami style seems to have not slowed down throughout. Um, even while the pay jump's getting bigger, it seems to get more aggressive, which is kind of what you should do if your opponents are letting them uh, getting run over. But these two guys yeah. actually, now that their final three have been putting up a lot of resistance. Um, Mladen says, I risk my house with seven deuce for two big blinds. Uh, you and I are one and the same. Uh, for me, it's about the pride of just whipping over the seven deuce after they fold for the upteenth time. Um, but yes, it depends on what kind of house I'm risking. If I'm risking like a, you know, like a million dollar house or like a cardboard house, you know, this is it's two very different types of houses. If my house is made out of Amazon boxes, you know, like I'm gladly going to be ripping in them seven deuce and getting two big blinds every single time. Right. But if I'm, you know, risking a real house with, a, you know, like a, a title to the name, well, it's pretty, it's pretty tough to do. You know, where are you living in a in a cardboard house exactly <laughs> amazon boxes too okay they send out a lot of boxes too much back really do. Too, you know yeah absolutely uh, my building does not recycle and it destroys me just so much plastic so much cardboard all righty cami style eight four off suit he's out of there You think he uh, just like rolled and happened to roll low? Couldn't open 8 4 offsuit this time? Because <laughs> Miami style is not using a randomizer when he plays, okay? <laughs> because his randomizer, it would just always somehow hit. It's, it's impossible. Yeah, I never really got the point of randomizing. Like, I just like use my head and randomize with my heart and we call it a day. It's not that serious. The heart of the cards. I like it. <laughs> All righty, King Five is gonna grow a little bet here. I like that he's limping still, despite Molinelli uh, raising the Jack Six. The second is when you raise the big blind against a small blind limp and you get caught and have to show up the hand, they tend to do it a lot less, right? So you can get away with a lot more limps. Um, yeah, absolutely. like you said, right? When you three when you three bet the second, third, and fourth time, you better start having the goods. Yeah, um, especially if your opponents have enough chips to potentially try and exploit their newfound information. So you think so? You don't like randomizing, but you know about those uh, internet players that do the randomizing in live live tournaments, like or live cash games. They they use like the little clock hands. You've heard about this? Yeah, before. they use clock hands. They use what suit? They use what card is on top? Uh, it all sounds ridiculous. I just uh they, check they my emotions kicked out. they yes, should kick out of the table like this is not how poker is meant to be anyways there's an over bet in a limp pot here cammy's got a pair on a very connected board it is limp pot so a deuce is very possible in play for both players um tough huh it's a bet on the flop check check on the turn 
I believe. Wow, folds the best hand. For once. Yeah. Yeah. I'm shocked can be folded. Uh, I think he might be a little gun shy after calling down with like second or third pair earlier versus CCW when CCW overbet. Um, yeah, it's a, it's it's not as easy as it was, right? Like it's he seems to have been getting every decision spot on perfect before, but ever since he lost that really key pot ten nine suiting against the Jack Seven, yeah. seems like it's kind of been a bit more losing, but sometimes winning some pots here and there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something that's really fun about this uh, is just how deep the players still are. Um, even Cammy, now being the short stack, still has 35 bigs. Yeah. It's actually the reason we're so deep is actually we lost players very quickly. Um, normally, it would take a lot more time for more players to bust. What that means is the blind levels will go up, shallower stacks, but uh, these guys have been flying. Uh, it's just been, it's just been really crazy action. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like last time we commentated, we saw someone, I want to say it was Loris, where they had they were chip lead for a really long time, and then they just blew up after a couple of hands. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder if we will see the same thing happen to Cammy. It's starting to happen a bit, right? Because remember, he at some point, he had about 180 million. He's lost 100 million ships, more than half of his stack. Um, yeah. I guess if you're important. going to blow up, though, it's not as bad when it's the final three. You don't want to be the chip leader bust out in sixth or fifth, right? Like, that feels real bad. Yeah. To be fair, this is when the pay jumps are the biggest. Um, and I was, uh, I was very surprised by the prize pool this time around. Um, normally, just... I see first place. So I'm like, ah, oh, first place would be nice, but like second and third just doesn't seem like it pays as well. Um, but when you have 220K USD up top, uh, that is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, this is the APL main event. Uh, we had a ton of entries in this event. Yeah, I'm, I'm also, yeah, I'm very impressed by the quality of players we're getting as well. Um, in the honorable mentions, I feel like we saw a lot of big names uh fox and was the one that stuck out to me um but yeah we have a we have a star-studded final table four titles i think Six thousand nine hundred and twelve entries that were in this tournament it's a uh, 1888 renminbi to play how much is that in usd off the top of your head is like that thirty dollars like it's yeah. not thirty dollars 180 wait i'm uh, sorry what did you say three hundred dollars yeah, $1,888. I'm like, this Chinese person's a fraud. Zero. Does not know the math <laughs> to yeah. change. It. Oh my God, $30. That's what we had last week. But that was a different prize pool, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, this is event number 16. A lot of blind versus blind happening. I think the reason we see a bunch of limps right now is because the stack sizes are quite large. So maybe yeah. things might slow down a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something else that I'm really curious about is I wonder how these players rate themselves compared to their other two opponents. I wonder if every single one of them thinks they're the best player or like CCW knows that he needs like luck on his side. Um, I do think they all are feeling confident but in different ways. Kamista, I think, still thinks he's the best player, hypothetically. We don't know if it's true. Um, but the other two guys kind of see him as maybe like a potentially a blow-up target in the sense that maybe they just kind of play quite solid against him because he's just going to kind of blast off some chips here and there. It's going to be a good poker game, and we'll see how it develops and what goes on. Here is a Nice bluff of the king five. I know he had the best hand, but uh, he expected his opponents to fold a better hand in that one. Yeah, absolutely. More than anything, we've seen all three players make moves. Um, and I find that just much more fun to watch and uh, probably also a little bit more fun to play against. Yeah. Two queens for Cami stars. He got the bad image. We know he's going to three bet this hand. I'm curious to see if Molinelli will continue and call a three bet with the five four suit. It's a reasonable hand to call a three bet with, um, but his style has been a little bit cautious whenever a huge pot could potentially brew up. 
more than that, we're just shallow enough that uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Nicolo fold to this three bet. But maybe he's just like, you know what? I'm going to pounce on this guy. I know he's just three betting garbage. He's not this time. Um, but yeah, he, it, it would be very out of character if he decided to call that one. Because, you know, he, I feel like he understands the most that these pay jumps are really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, unfortunately, even if our opponent is just three betting absolute trash, that still has five high beat most of the time. <laughs> well, I mean, everything has five high beat almost. Wow, nine three offsuit going for the limp punish. I don't think this will work. Cami style has been even calling up hands like king seven offsuit. So queen eight suit is good enough. Pair on pair action. <laughs> That's what we're calling it these days. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm just trying to coin some new terms uh, in this two pair for the nine three offsuit. Just disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, this is crazy. I want to see some chips get in the pot. Um, I would yeah, wow. bet that Nicolo sees Cami as a bit of a calling oh station. Oh my god! Wow. Over bet for Cami. So I don't mind it. It actually does look like my opponent has a hand like ace nine, king nine, ten nine, maybe two jacks, two ten, something strong, but not that strong. Uh, Would you ever like to see Molinelli jam? I don't know the answer to this question, but he <sighs> is going to raise and Cami style. Um, Can he get away? When we three bet, and then the flop comes queen nine four turn three. We're not really supposed to have that many good hands, especially when Cami has a queen. Like queen nine suited is the only hand that seems super obvious. All the other hands are sets, and I don't even know if our opponents uh, through betting threes and fours. Yeah, it is a raised limp and in limp, so not the closest three bet. But anyways, Cami still he is going to jam into the two pairs of Molinelli oh. got tricked. He's got jabated. Can he hit the queen a four? Can he? Base card or four sider? That could be a four. It could be a four. I think it is wow. a four. He has counterfeited the three nine. He made the wrong play. Oh my God. Cammy style is back. Uh, yeah, unlucky for Nicolo. Poor guy. Plays the hand perfectly. And somehow just loses the biggest pot uh, of the tournament. Very you know unfortunate. What? You put me in Molinelli's shoes right there. You see the disconnect sign right after that hand happens. <laughs> Something is broken. I'm not unable to play anymore. My mouse is crumpled. My laptop trackpad doesn't work anymore. Yeah. But that is disgusting. But I mean, he did get lucky with the three nine to hit the two pairs on a turn. But Jesus these runouts have been crazy and Cami style has been in it every single time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Cami does not like to fold. And I'll be honest on that exact, in that exact hand, I can't blame them. I don't blame them because the line was ridiculous, right? Who raises the three on the turn? Well, it's because he's got nine, three off. So he got yeah. punished. Justice was served. <sighs> Yeah, uh, on that board especially, just not falling pot pair. Way too many draws. Front door hearts. Turn brings some straight draws. Front door hearts. I never – front door is not a common term I hear too often, but I like it. It's, you know, everyone always talks about the back door. So it's the front door. Uh, <laughs> All righty here. So it's raised three bet from CCW. Oh cold four bet from Canada now. The chip leader into the second place guy. And this is, this is, I want to see a flat. I do not want to see CCW fold here. We it's did not tough, acquire though. all of these chips to bleed it off like this. Uh, <laughs> maybe, but it's Kevin annoying. has shown down way too much junk where it's. I agree with you, but it is not an easy pot to play, even against a guy who's four bit like some air. Like he's got strong hands too. The thing is, Look at the stack sizes, man. It's it's huge pot versus huge stack. And there's a guy with 20, 19 big blinds. He does make the call. 
but he got out flush. Yeah, no, how bad does it feel when you have just called a four bet with a pair and somehow the flop has both an ace <laughs> and a king? That's what it. you're saying. Whenever you call these pairs, you know what? You know, as the flop comes up, no ace, no king, no ace, no king, no ace, no king. Ace and king comes. Boom. King on turn. Brutal. Uh, I used to think it was mandatory to call one street with any pair, no matter how bad the flop came. Uh, <laughs> I have since learned that it's actually okay to just fold. Yeah. So CCW did make the call. It comes the worst flop possible. Cami style. <laughs> He just never stops, right? Like, cause some kind of some people they kind of slow down. They're like, all right, I think I need to be a little bit calm, right? But he's been sure. relentless and crazy. He did get lucky that last hand, but he did get unlucky in some other hands too. Two eights is just hoping for a showdown. Somehow hoping his opponent has two sevens or two sixes. It's unlikely, but it is possible. He's thinking about turning his hand to a bluff. It looks like, or he's trying to fake pretend and get a cheap showdown. It's one of the two. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I was actually just thinking about turning our hand to a bluff, but when we do, uh, the only hands we really get to fold are nines through queens. And even then, I'm not actually sure Cami Styles folds them. Nines through queens think? is a very high likelihood given the action it has gone check, check on his flop, check, check on his turn. These hands would play these hands uh, exactly the same, usually at a very high frequency. Yeah. So I do think there is merit in stabbing with the two eights. Mm -hmm. A lot of merit. Yeah, because you would think if Cami Style had a big hand of these stack sizes, he probably would have threw an even like a 10% pop there, like something to get some value sure. at Ace King. That's a good point. Um, it won't work though if he bets. I'm sorry, it just won't work. Yeah. <laughs> there is the bet. Oh, not a fan of that size although that size looks very value heavy and when our opponent has an ace they're not folding for larger size anyways may as well save ourselves the chips i guess that's just only bluffing for a small size seems... it's a reasonable bet actually i know it seems like you're, you're never getting an ace or king to fold but like queens jacks tens nines might actually have to fold this to some uh percentage of time even though it's a small it looks very value heavy i'm not too sure why cami style is thinking is he potentially turning his hand to a bluff with this bet size you can't fold even ace nine i know you could be out kicked easily but the price is just way too good correct call there and he's got a dominating shift I, remember not too long ago okay, what talk we'll resume and respond to all that what's happened it's been so crazy check out the gg wildcard cam we'll be back in five minutes guys the GG Poker Wildcard Cam. Ah, uh, yes, back at it again. This is the GG Poker Wildcard Cam. Looking back at some classic hands on GG, featuring some titans of the game. And Brent, speaking of titans, at the 25K World Series of Poker bracelet event, the 25K heads up, Jake the Snake Dindler oh. against Victor Malinowski. It's limitless. It's limitless. It's Schindler. It's Jake. Mm. It's Winthor. Mm. Here we go. Two of the best to ever get it done. And we get to guess Jake Schindler's hand, Jeff? That is correct. Does Schindler have the ace 10 off? Does he have the seven deuce of spades, the queen 10 of hearts? Or is it perhaps the queen jack of clubs, A, B, C, or D? Let us know as you watch this hand play out. We know that Limitless has flopped top pair. Let's see what Jake the Snake does on the flop. A little down bet, I think. I think we've got some sort of crazy equity. I think we might have Queen Jack of Clubs. I'm, I'm leaning there, Queen Maybe. Jack of Clubs. So you think it's the flush draw, you think it's the gut shot, you think it's the pair of jacks as well. I do, I think he's got the whole world seemingly in his hands just trying to get there. And he's facing one of the best in the world who checks on the turn. Schindler ramps it up a little bit here, betting 12,500. Oh my goodness gracious, I, I'm going with it. Lock it in, D, write it on the screen, choice D, Queen Jack of Clubs. I think he turned the stone cold nutter butters with the Queen Ten of Hearts. We do see a third club on the river. Lock me in, Mr. Hanks, for the Queen Ten of the Hearts. Give me choice C. You got it. 
Well, I know I've got the goods. How about all of it? How about all of it? How about every single chip? Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Radar holds things. Oh my God. Michael Adamo is the best. And we are back. What's up, everyone? Now, if you guys did the GG wildcard cam, cam promotion, remember, you can only enter once, okay? Don't be naughty and try to enter twice. You're just trying to disqualify yourself. So don't, don't be that guy. Um, so welcome back, Lynn. And this has been the best final table of the three series we've done together, in my opinion. And it's not even over. Uh, it's been real crazy. Cammy style... Coming into the final three was the chip leader, lost it all. Looks like he was going to be potentially out in third. And now he's even got a bigger domination happening right now, right? 223 million. Uh, what are your thoughts on what's happening so far amongst these three players, Lynn? Yeah, I, I definitely agree that this is the best uh, final table you've done so far. And I also think it's probably the highest caliber of players. I love seeing the moves that they're making. Uh, speaking of which, if you guys are also enjoying the stream, please hit that like button. I see almost 400 people watching. There's only 50 likes. Let's try to get to 100, just like last time. Um, but yeah, this is a ton of fun. I love seeing the creativity these players have, Nano. Yeah, and it's kind of mainly been Cammy style and against the world, right? Throughout this final table, he's got the big chip lead. He's been making people fold the best hand over and over and over again. He did get lucky right before the break with the queen eight, but it's hard to put your opponent on a two pair at three nine. Um, and, and they got in a lot of chips in on that turn card. I can't, I think it's like 50, 40 to 50 big ones a piece. I don't know. It was a lot. So let's go back for a second. What is going on with Nicolo when he three bets 9-3 uh, offsuit there? Wait, uh, we can't go back right now because he just called with 10-6 and he rivers the trips. Cami style. He's up against what was top pair. It's now aces and tens of a king kicker. And he, now he leads in when he rivers the trips and Molinelli. He's not going to fold Never because folding. he's up against because he's up against Cami style, right? Like, yeah, absolutely not. No, he's not folding. Nice. Nicely done. Oof. If there's a garbage hand this hand, then we can go back, Lynn. Is there a garbage hand? Yes, there is. What is it you want to say? Nicolo, three betting, nine, three off suit. Nano, is that something you sometimes do, never do, <laughs> do when you're on massive tilt? What well, are you in a hand, Cami style was limping again, and Molinelli was just thinking, you know, I'm going to try to punish you. You got less chips than me to start the hand. He raises the 9-3. I don't 
generally speaking, people are very polarized in that spot, whereas really, so you can see here the 4 8 offsuit, uh, another very similar garbage type hand. They think that they're limping a very wide range. And um, yeah, you often will just see like the best hands raise and then the very worst hands because the middling hands don't want to get re raised off the hand. Um, as played post flop, I think it seemed he like Molinelli played the hand uh, quite fine and just got really unlucky. And now he's the clear short stack of 10 big blinds. And the blinds are going up. Does Ace Three get it in here if Cammy limps? Ooh, of does Cammy ever rips it in himself? No. Okay. Well, good thing he did not, because Ace Three would have snapped them off so fast with these stack sizes. I imagine it's going to jam to Ace Three. So everyone's guaranteed 124,000 USD. It's a 41k pay jump from third to second place. It's a very big one. Yeah, I expect CCW to play a little bit more conservatively, um, at least until Nicolo either busts or doubles. I think CCW should play very, very tight, actually. Um, yeah, this even hands like 7-4 suited, very flop. I would just be folding them out, right? Here's going to be a jam from Molinelli or a raise call off. One of these guys is going to pay off. The question is who? I think CCW has, should fold, has to fold. We don't really want to be the one doubling up Molinelli. Um, oh, he's ooh. going to rejam the A7 into the A's 10. Molinelli has a chance to get a clean double up. Needs to dodge that seven or those backdoor hearts that only Lynn can see, but uh, <laughs> double, double, even stacks, <laughs> dead even. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I like that from uh, CCW. Yeah. We have an ace, though. How bad can it really be? It's not bad for definitely. He could easily be ahead. His opponent could have all the worst aces. Of course, the better aces, the king, queens, the jack tens. Um, definitely seems That's like true. a fine play to me. The only tricky part is say you call off 25 million or you reshove and the big line wakes up with something that's a disaster. Um, if he was in a big blind, he would never fold for sure. Queen yeah. 10 suited. Raises ace deuce in the big blind. He's got 50, 21, 22 big blinds. It is going to rejam. That's a big rejam with this hand. It's going to work. Should be quick fold. Queen high. Not that interested. What looked like Molinelli was going to be the next one out is now flip flop and change. Is actually yeah. Wow, dream scenario, right? Because uh, two guys with 20 big blinds, that means the chip leader can raise so much more often, even jam hands like this. Sure. Because the other two guys need to just fold. They, they can't call off like two fives there, you know what I mean? Two sixes, which would be, they just can't. It'd be an ICM disaster, and these two guys know it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a final table that is... Uh, somehow has two South Americans, huh? Despite them being crazy. They're good, I told you. They, they are always phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> one Austrian left of the... And there were funny things. The Austrians are supposed to be the good ones at this final table, but uh, he is pretty good, Molinelli, but I, I'm still loving the way Cami style plays the most. They got so much hype. It's just the Austrians coming into this. Um, but to our chat, well, where are you guys all tuning in from? Yeah, there was this guy, okay, one of the GG squad members, IR Egyptian, gave a two-minute spew on all the three Austrian players on how they're going to win this final table betting, and there's only one remaining. It's definitely looking tough now. Um, it's also just really interesting to me how much more aggressively this final table is playing uh, as opposed to the last two that we got to commentate. The difference is that the previous two final tables were a smaller buy-in. So you get a lot of guys that, you know, just want to play for fun and just happen to, to fall upon the final table. And it's big pay jumps, right? Even 5K pay jumps is like something they've never scored before, right? Sure. These guys yeah. all have played big stakes before. I mean, you know, big enough stakes. So these pay jumps, while are big, um, they understand uh, all the tournament strategies and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, Cami fired eight bullets into this. Uh, Nicolo won a WSOP bracelet in 2020. Uh, 
Chani's one bullet the one wonder. That fired eight bullets, right? Is that what you just yeah. said? The, yes, it makes, yeah. Does it make sense to you now? It makes a lot uh, of sense. Yeah, I, I can see it in his play style. I can see how he could lose the first seven. Um, but CCW, also a one bullet wonder, only needed to fire one bullet, made it to the final table. He also won high roller millions. So uh, definitely, uh, these three definitely know what they're doing. Yep. So Cami Style opens pre flop, doesn't bet the flop. Molinelli actually checks back the king high flush draw. That's going to be so disguised, especially against a big chip leader type player. A big bet from Cami Style. We know Molinelli can't fold this hand. It could be the best hand. He could hit a club, a king, many clean outs. Uh, be a just be a terrible fold to be honest i don't think it's gonna fold yeah gonna we sh definitely should not be uh folding turn if we're gonna check back flop if we're gonna do that may as well just bet flop and hope our opponent uh let's go with their hand cami style has nothing is he going to fire his lines a little we have funny a queen. he jams Ooh. all in with queen high this guy's a god this is amazing <laughs> There's something to be said about how when you're short-handed, you don't make as many good hands. Um, so yeah, someone someone should pick up the chips that are just lying there in the middle. They might get lonely. Rip it in. Queen 10 suited can do nothing. It wants to see a flop, but it's just too much for him. This is all Cammy style. There's no way he doesn't. I mean, he's obviously going to get top two of these stack sizes. He's going to cl close it out. The question is, Who's going to get third and who's going to get second, in my opinion, Lynn? There's no way they're coming back, right? Yeah, it's the chip lead is just absurd. There's, what, 330,000 chips in play. Cami has 80% of it, maybe, 70. That's pretty but crazy. You need to double someone twice. Here's the thing. It's not just a big difference in chip stacks. It's the play style as well that's earning him these chips. The other two guys are not fighting for anything. They're just waiting for anything reasonable to go with. He's chipping them down, what, so many chips at a time, right? These blinds are yeah. big. They really are. Um, oh, yeah. My even God. if he does double someone, he'll have already won so many chips. GG for CCW, isn't it? Because he has to rejam his A7 against this chip leader raising any two cards. Does he, so. though, with another 15 big blind stack? Bye bye, Brazil. I I'm calling it. He's uh, he's out. He's jamming his hand. There's no chance he does not jam his hand. No I chance. He can fly. He can, but he's not because he's from Brazil and he sees his cami style raising into two cards. So he is going to jam it. There we go. Can he find the seven? Mm, no. Not doing it. I'm not going to any... read the cards out. There's no seven coming. There's one more card. Let's there. get a three sider. Oh. three threes you said three is that three sides i have no idea three. <laughs> there's three in the sides in the middle if you just like keep peeling yeah so all right so we did lose out ccw he got third 124th i love the good luck when he's got a 10 to 1 chip lead like it's oh me too like he's, he's rubbing it in a little bit right yeah um, absolutely but uh, no, seriously, big congrats to our Brazilian player in third. I, I think we have to do give him a congrats, right? He came in in seventh Absolutely. position, I believe, yeah. 124K USD. Um, it's an excellent score. But now, yeah. heads up, Lynn. Um, yeah, I, I thought CCW would probably just be a taking time bomb and would go out really quickly. Uh, and instead, I think he did a really good job of just playing tight solid while everyone else was busting out left and right. Yeah. So in this heads up match, it is 10 to one. I need to say this before they potentially bust out. They are playing for 55,000 USD. It's a 360,000 renminbi difference. So it's, it's quite large. King, queen, a seven, this could be it. We know it's getting in there. Yeah. Zero chance. This Just like our a seven. <laughs> this is not going. Snap. Use the emoji first. There we go. Emoji first is to play. Just one time. Need to see some face card, and there we go. Oh, diamond. diamond to ace. Be good. It is. Oh, it might be an eight. Three. Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> All righty. Wow. 
Okay, so he's got a big chance now uh, with that double up. Yes, he's behind, but he's used to, now they're all happy because they got that big pay jump into the heads up. Yeah, definitely got a much uh, much bigger chance than what he just had. But looking at the two stacks, definitely wouldn't be feeling too good if I was Niccolo Malinelli. How many times has Cami style bluffed off his opponents in this tournament? So many times, right? Yeah. Usually when you see a final table, it's like, oh, there's like one, two, maybe three cool hands that happen. This guy's played every single one of them. It's been more than three guaranteed. Two Kings is going to raise up against this limp. I hope Nicolo's not thinking of getting fancy. Oh wow. my God. This That's guy. A flop. One with the Queen seven against two Kings disgusting now how many chips does cammy have to lose given that the flop came ace high um Ooh, diamonds coming in as well it's a it's a bad board the only problem is he min bet the flop so he might make up some excuses on why he might need to continue for another street he might you know be like oh he's floating me with some i don't know 10 9 type right. answer I think he still might call these two kings. He does. Does he ever try to value bet again? Because I'm well, not sure what we're getting to call us. Well, Mullinelli wants to get called by like the ace tens, the ace nines, the ace kings. He needs a size. Find the perfect size for an ace to call. I don't think that'd be all the chips. I think it'd be like I think 10k or 10 million, 12 million. Yeah, something I think it looks like super this. reasonable. Two thirds pot. I would love to see Cami style flip with this hand. I just feel like it's too ambitious to hope your opponent floated you on a flop, is betting the turn and betting the river, trying to move you off an ace. Seems could unlikely. Cami just get too attached to two kings, Nano? I could. It's a really pretty hand. You were uh, berating, I think, Nicolo for a very similar spot earlier. Ah, uh, very different, actually. But for also finding a fold with kings, so very, very different. Like uh, <laughs> I can fold these two kings in a heartbeat. The other two kings, I'd be calling in the heartbeat. Anyways, uh, nice lucky hand for queen seven. It's not really the hand you expect to crack the two kings, but it did it. They're getting some big hands. Well, I mean, one guy's getting big hands, but he's getting screwed over by the other They're guy. They're taking uh, turns getting big hands. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> Top pair, top kick. Seems like a, a nice board for him. It's going to go ahead and fire a flop bet and likely take this one down. So it's Argentina versus the Austrian. You know, what happens if the Austrian runs out of time? When, not what happens, but he, when he runs out of time, <laughs> uh, because I expect you know they're gonna play a little bit. It's my little read on the situation after that little double up. Uh, when he runs out of time, he's got five seconds to act. It might be five on top of five potentially. So let's just say ten seconds to act on every street, but as little as five seconds. And if he doesn't act, he's basically takes the weakest action, which is either a check or a fold. Um, and so. Yeah, you definitely don't want that. Uh, Cami style has nothing to worry about with his seven minutes of time bank. Uh, he can just play as normal. Over bet here with the Jack Deuce. 10 4. Be a sick, sick call. Like, really, this would be so sick. But he has been on point. He makes wow. the call and gets rivered by the Jack. That's <sighs> so disappointing. That's yeah. such a sick call to make for an over bet on the turn. That was crazy. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, beautiful call. Luck box the jack with the jack deuce offsuit. He's going to check. These guys got history. How do you feel if you're Cami and you just see the jack deuce? I feel annoyed because I feel like I should have won this tournament by now, right? But you know what? <laughs> you can't get salty because we are still playing for a lot of money, right? Um, about 55K. He, he needs to keep composed. He's playing great. He's playing phenomenal. He's making the right calls. He's making the right bluffs. He just needs to keep doing it. Flopping trip tens here. Wow. Oh, what a life. 
See, if this was one of the last two streams, uh, if one player flops chips and the other player has nothing, there's just no more chips going into the pot. Um, shouldn't be any more chips going in this hand either, but uh, definitely seen a lot more moves getting made here than we have previously. In heads up, you got to fight for the small pots. I like to say that the big pots kind of play themselves, right? Like, so you don't need to worry about those hands so much. You need to win these small pots. You need to get that red line up because uh, they add up. The blinds are big. Obviously, there's an ante in this heads up match. You just kind of need to go for it. It is mid pair versus bottom pair. <laughs> Very connected board, though. So I don't expect Very. multiple bets to go in. It's like kind of like maybe even a check on the flop, but I uh, can see really see it go both ways. So it is a check. It's a kind of annoying turn for both players, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, usually this just gets checked down, but Cammy loves bluffing his scare cards, Nano. If a scare card feels yeah. off, Cammy's chips are going it. I don't really think it's really a bluff. Oh man, did he get sucked out on again? King six. Jeez. This Molinelli just uh, just finding some lucky hands, but to be fair, he did get screwed over on the ninth three off suit one. Um, I think Cami style wanted to kind of prevent his opponent from checking down a hand like bottom pair ace high, so that's why he opted to bet the turn on a four liner. That's a... out of position. I think in position he's more likely to have uh, checked back. That's true. He did go for a smaller size. I think he went for five million into thirteen. I feel like Cammy's getting baited here and it's going to work. I think he might call down with his eight and he yeah. does make the call. Yeah, Cammy's definitely not one to fold. It feels like just uh, just an hour ago, everyone had so many big blinds. And now I look over and the big blind's three million and the, yeah, going up soon. For a heads up match, this is still pretty deep. It is 40 big blinds versus what the, the 80 big blinds. So definitely a lot of uh, room to play. You know, all, all moves are in play. You know, you can three bed, you can flat, you can limp free raise, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. King 10. We haven't Lots seen many there. limp free raises today, huh? It's not really, Perhaps. it's not a popular strategy. It's not a, a play that everyone has in their arsenal, but if you put the right player in, it starts to happen. Nano, do you have that? Uh, do you have that technique in your strategy? Uh, no, I don't get to heads up. I always bust before I get to heads up. <laughs> <Okay>. so, uh... <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Queen Jack versus Ace Nine. Uh, two reasonable hands. Some yeah. players three bet the Ace Nine. I like calling it personally, but uh, you know, me too. Our hand there. is a little too good to three bet. Um, and then fold to a four bet. Also, we just value on ourselves a lot when we three bet right. it because better you don't hands like, call. I don't like to waste my hand. That's what I think about sometimes when I three bet a hand, right? Like, cause we had fold, say three bet folds his hand is, it's, it's like, like you said, it's too strong, but it's not, it's not the strongest, but it's not the weakest. So ace nine, gonna check raise. Interesting play in my opinion. I think so too. Uh, this board just doesn't seem that draw heavy. Our hand doesn't seem to really need too much protection. Um, a fun little turn. Very, Tammy very picks up fun. some equity. Uh, and Nicolo makes two pair. This is a turn card that could end things potentially depending on the river card. Um, style was hoping to hit that little straight. He's got open ended now. So I Does know Cammy he feels ever rip. He might, given the way he plays. Uh, still think calling is ideal. And yeah, unfortunately, I don't, I think Molinelli is going to try to value bet this hand himself. It looks like they're just going to be uh, dead even in chips after this hand. Yeah. If Molinelli checks, like he wins all the chips. But the truth is, he's probably going to value bet so he doesn't let an ace seven and the ace eight just check back the right. card. Yeah. Now we play the waiting game. Although if I was Monelli, I don't think I burned that many seconds just Hollywooding with my hand. Um, wow. Oh, he does check. I can't believe oh it. I did God. not expect it, but this is actually the right play against the hand he's up against and he is going to pick up extra chips. I cannot imagine the queen jack not bluffing. Needs to bluff to win this hand. 
It's not going to work though. Does he go all in though, or does he just call? Do we want to try to pick up the extra? I'm all what, in. 36, 37 here. million. Yeah, I think so. You got it. You got it. Wow. And then can't. Uh. So. What a disaster for Cammy. What a check. That is a crazy check, and it was the right yeah. check. I got to give it to Molinelli there. I, he just read his opponent perfectly. It was just like, this guy's always got some random hands. He's turning his hands into bluffs, all sorts of things. I yeah, can't absolutely. believe he's a chip leader. Because you got to remember, Molinelli had 30 million or 25 million in his heads up at one point. So maybe that shot clock is, is actually helpful. You know, he, got, he tricked his opponent a little bit, I feel like. Maybe. <laughs> Can't do that too many more times. If he does that, he's not going to have it when he actually needs it. All right. Okay. So. They both pick up. They both have open energy. Wow. Okay. Straight. Molinelli's getting the perfect runouts lately. Yeah. Cammy should be able to get away from this, not lose any more chips. It's, it's an over bet. Well, Cammy style... would have to lose his mind. To... Yeah, it is polarized. He did see Molinelli over bet earlier, and he did catch that one, but uh, decides to get away from this one. All righty, so Cammy's going to limp. He's now got the 40 big blinds effective. Molinelli, he's, got, he's feeling and good, I feel like. Because you got to remember, not too long ago, he was like, I can't believe I'm going to get be out of this tournament, right? Like, finally, heads up, 10 big blinds. Now he's like, I'm going to win this tournament. Cammy Styles on the same page, though. He's like me. He's like, well, I'm going to count my chip stack. It's less than my highest point. Let's go aggressive. Let's win it back or end it very quickly. Yeah, Kenny's definitely going through some swings, but uh, seems to be playing his game and be playing at least reasonably solid throughout. Um, Two jacks is going to open. Cammy's got king six. Definitely a hand that's worthy of calling. Some people like to choose his hand three bet. It's a little reckless, but some people do do it. I think calling is the usually the right play, but he is going to three wow. bet the king six. Called it. His timing is terrible right now. Now does Jax get ripped in for the remaining 100 million chips? I'm throwing in a 45 million re-raise. Oh, he looks like he's going to just rip it in with this one. You suck emoji. Um, <laughs> let my opponent make some mistake. These emojis are excellent. Yes, I know. Uh-oh, ace-king versus ace-queen suited. These are hands that are definitely getting it in pre-flop. Cami style has a chance to flip it around. He's luck box the ace-king at the right time. Can he hold? Can he hold, Lynn? Or is Molinelli really going to win this tournament right now with ace-queen? I think Molinelli is actually going to win this tournament. But what about this yeah. hand? Because you're no, saying like, the tournament. No, 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 we no, no, no. Know about oh, this I'm hand. sorry. I think Molinelli is going to win this hand. I think a queen is going to come out, and that'll be all she wrote. Well, it's not here. <laughs> not it looking like it yet. Here. One card left. Going to need a face card. Let's go, Cammy. Cammy's got the full double up to $211 million. Bad read from Lin G there. <laughs> what a flip-flop. This... This is an epic heads yeah. up match so far. This is the, super fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. The best. Yeah. Wow. What is this? Look at this. You know what? I'm punishing you with pocket deuces, 40 big blind, insta jam. Cammy style is like, I'm the real chip leader. And emoji back. Come on. How many times can the chip lead flip flop before someone wins it all? Could be millions of times, technically. It could be forever. We could, we technically could be streaming this to a day three, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's possible. Uh, All righty. 
Ace Jack. It's going to start up an open. Queen five, definitely a hand he can consider raise. I'm not raising, calling, but he has three bets in garbage and he's going to do it again. Bad timing for Cat. Is Malinati going to rip again? Yes. <laughs> there it goes. Now, I feel like Cammy style, I'm not sure what he's thinking. Is he thinking this guy's picking up hands or is he thinking this guy's got, he's on to me, knows I'm doing up to I would good. definitely slow down if I was Cammy. Uh, I, I would just feel shitty, honestly, about dumping 20 million at a time uh, for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Seems very unnecessary to I me. I feel like Cammy style's post lock game is quite strong, so I don't mind seeing a little bit more flops here and there. That's true. I agree with you on that. And he's willing to play his uh, hands very aggressively post-flop. So any chips that are just left there get picked up. But I feel like Nicolo is uh, starting to catch on to what Cammy's doing. That check when he had ace nine versus the queen jack. Yeah. Really so, enjoyed that hand. So Mon Molinelli here, he bet the flop. An overcard comes. He checks and gives up. So the pair of threes is good as long as he does not fold um let's see what cami style does, does he's going to check i don't think molinelli is going to go for the bet check bet it would be kind of a weird line to take but we'll see it would be very uncredible because the opponent does have the weakest of pairs possible the weakest kicker and he is going to go for the bet check bet it's a big big bet can Cammy style pull off this call? It'd be super sick. I mean, I think I could see Cammy turning his hand into a bluff, but I, I guess we do have the three of clubs. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I would like to see a raise or a fold. I don't really want to see him call. Uh, it is a check raising. You are right on go. point, Lindsay. Cammy style is playing perfectly. Uh, I know he's got the best hand, but he's trying to. He's trying to beat those thin value bets, and it makes a lot of sense because a queen would bet the turn probably 95% of the time, right? Uh, impressive play from Cammy style. I want to curve and get this free roll in. It starts in 10 minutes. The password is JAM, J-A-M. You can win some flip and go tickets. Now back to the action. It's hot and fat. It's Jack-10. I don't think it's going to fold. Um, he's going to make the call. Nice flop. Not oh. the flop we are looking for with Jack 10. Yeah, he might float still, right? It's a 25% pot bet. He's got the Jack of Hearts. Does he have the Lin G, the back doors? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have the Lin G when the flop comes ace <laughs> ace. Next. So, uh... all right. Um, some cool, cool hands, but usually. I've been very impressive, Cami style. I want yeah, to take absolutely. a what? Do, what does this profile say, Lynn? Do you have that up somewhere? Like how much GG poker winnings? Or I don't tell us something more about. No, this yeah, guy. let's take a look. Um, his largest cash for Cami Styles is twenty four thousand. He's cashed for one hundred eighty six total on GG poker, so definitely has some experience. Um. His in the money percentage is interesting. So I talked to a few friends who play tournaments and his is 13%, which is roughly what you want it to be. You actually don't want that number to be too high um, for all the viewers out there, because if the in the money percentage, which is the amount of times they cash, if that percentage is too high, it means that the player just plays too conservatively. They're playing the cash and not for the win. Uh, and as we can see, that is not Cammy's uh, style. Um, or... You're the luckiest person. You play crazy and you still cash 50% of the time. That would be the <laughs> dream combo, right? Like you win. I really would. You can go on. Yeah, but uh, Molinelli, on the other hand, has almost 1.4 million in cashes on GG Poker. Uh, soon to be 1.6. So, you know, I would think experience. that with the way the final table has played out that those caches might be even be reversed. Um, oh well, yeah, absolutely. Cami style pays off the Jack value, but very nice uh, value bet from Molinelli. And they are very, very close here. Chat. You guys have been watching this heads up match for a while. Who do you guys want to see win? 
Um, Madeline says, Cami, you are the man. I absolutely agree. It's just making moves left and right. Yeah. Definitely deserves the win. For the um, most expensive part of the tournament, right? Like the 55K pay jump. You did mention something earlier, and it was about the time bank. So Molinelli's have 20 second, 27 seconds left. Um, if this actually could really come into play, uh, you know, because they're very deep right now. They're playing 45 big lines effective. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could be real bad. Yeah, no, this feels like something I should know, but uh, how often? Oh, you know what? You said the blind levels go up based on how many hands they play, not yes. how much time has elapsed. Um, Correct. Do you know how I many hands that is? I don't know. It does uh, vary based on tournament to tournament. If I was to guess, it's either 20 or 25 hands. Yeah, um, if we're looking at the top left corner, it looks like that number is ticking. With oh, I can't hand. read that. I can't read that. So I guess that means 19 hands <laughs> remaining. Don't worry. I can't either. I'm just watching the numbers change. Oh, I thought you could read that. <laughs> Absolutely Jesus. not. You are such a bluffer. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> I think it's good to balance in real life too. That's what all the new up and comers keep teaching me. Okay, a little hand brewing up here is a limp pot. It's actually pair versus the trip ace. And the thing is, Cami Style checked the ace seven to big blind. So he has a very disguised hand. Molinelli. Molinetti is wasting time here. He's taking the bait here 100%. This he can't fold this. He's going to three bet the ace five. Wow. He thinks his hand is vulnerable, thinks he's got the best hand. It's actually going to make it even tougher for him, I feel like. Yeah. Cammy's got to be thinking this guy's either got a flush draw or air. Does a flush draw call off? I don't think Why we rip this. It's, it's right? too much wow. to jam. What? He's going wow. to min click it. He thinks his opponent has got the flush draw or some random air. I, this is just brilliant poker. Really, this is a. Molinetti has five seconds, Nano. Yeah, he might just side call. I don't know, side fold. He, he's got five seconds from here now. The red, he does make the side call. He turns a flush draw. This is a huge pot, and it's a limp yeah, pot. Check from the A7. I, I take the free card, I think. I, I do too. He's got no time oh to God. think, though. You got to figure out quick. He's going to check in. Rear is wow. The pot. It's full house versus full house in the limp pot. And Cami style played it so ridiculous. It seems like he might not have an ace, but he does. Cami style. Can he value bet this? He doesn't even know what his opponent has. To be honest, it's, it's I, so crazy. That's such a big bet from Cami. It's a big but bet. Five seconds, just, so that's the problem for Molinelli. He might just go whatever call. He oh, does whatever call. Oh, no. Time bank oh. is important. Please. Yeah. You see that? It's very that important. That is a... Nice three bet. He's talking trash. Cami style. <laughs> <laughs> I like Cami a lot. I want Cami to be commentating. This is a... Uh, I just want him at every Oh, his thoughts table. on the action. Yeah, Jesus. absolutely. Okay. Wow. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that. I feel like everyone else has been just so well behaved. Um, well, that, I mean, that's what that's we no all usually are. So Molinelli is down to 10 big blinds. Cami Style's got 90 big blinds. We've seen um, this before, though. We yeah, have seen this we, before. We have. We actually have seen exactly this before. Uh, it seems like the entire chat is on Cami's side, and you can't blame them. How can you not? This guy makes the sickest plays over and over again. Uh, he did limp the King Jack here. 10 big blinds effective. Trying to trap his opponent. He's got a lot of outs. Let's see what happens. It's going to fire out. I think the 9-4 has got to continue with this many random outs. Time make is killing him. Makes Ooh. trip fours of a nine high flush. Ooh. The trip fours is useless, though. His opponent has a king of clubs. He's... If Cammy jams, does he get, get away? I think the answer might actually be be no he's losing chips i just don't know how much and it could be 27 Oof. million five seconds left for molinet four three 
two, one. Four cards beat us. No. Fold. He does fold. Shows him a jack of hearts, even though Love he it. <laughs> so that's what I hate. Whenever a opponent shows me one card, it's like, can they ever really have it? And uh, or no, can they ever really have a bluff? And I think the answer is no, because then you just turn over both cards. I mean, potentially. I mean, you do have the option of doing one on GG poker, but my God, this has been a, such a crazy <laughs> heads up. Yeah, remember, in heads up, we did have these stack sizes before, and Molinelli actually clawed his way up to 200 million. I yeah, don't know absolutely. if he can do it again, though, with no time bank. It's a different ball game. It is wow. open ended straight draw fuck. versus top set. I don't see how the money doesn't get in. It's going in. I think he just rips it in. Oh, check, check. I don't blame the queens for checking back because he's got such a crazy hand. The three, four. I think he's might. He's got a bet. No, he's going to check though. Can't start playing scared now. Well, now I have to peel one. And he doesn't know what to do anymore. Quad queens. <laughs> Quad queens. Oh my god. I mean, I guess he's just gonna jam, but he's not gonna get called by the four high. No. Wow, a beautiful hand. Now, how sick of a comeback story is it if Molinelli somehow finds a way to it, claw no. back the chips and take down the win? Lynn, the problem is no, he not possible. He already had his chance. You don't get two chances for the comeback story. You only get one. I disagree. Then, shipping it in into Ace Four, all in the call. Fifty-one million in the middle. Can it be over if Cami Stock can lock it up? He does not 10 on the flop. He needs a five or nine eight. for the chop. Nine's not going to chop it. Look carefully. Five on the river, and Mo Nelly is out in Wild. second place. $165,000 for his second place performance. But it is this the guy who came into the final table as the chip leader, Cami Styles, who is going to ship it for 221000 USD. 1.43 million renminbi it's been a sick performance lynn i'll let you start throwing some comments out what do you think about this final table today yeah i thought it was incredible obviously the heads up match was just out of this world um so many foot flops and chip lead but the two hands that really stood out to me was when ccw had the jack seven off three bet it versus the 10 nine of diamonds versus cami uh and just flop strips Chips versus a flush draw, and the money all goes in. Um, Molinelli, who ended up coming in second, uh, I really liked his check with the two pair, the ace nine when Cami had queen jack for the missed straight draw. Um, yeah, final yeah. table all played great. They absolutely deserved it. That ace nine play almost gave him a chance to come back and take down this tournament. Unfortunately, one of the biggest hands of the tournament was the crazy limp pot. It was the one where our, our eventual winner had the ace seven on ace, ace five. Monnelli had eight five of clubs, right? On that board, it was a flush draw on the flop. It was like bet, check, raise, min, click, three bet, min, click, four bet, call, check, check, <laughs> turn, river five, bet, call. That was a huge pot. The thing is, Molinelli only had five seconds of shot clock remaining. He had to act quickly. He was just like, this guy's too crazy. I just need to call. I just can't hold his hand. If he thought it through some more, maybe he could have got away from his hand. But that means he should have played faster on previous uh, hands of the tournament, right? Uh, in this game, we've got a limited time shot clock at our final table. It was a key hand. Our eventual winner was just crazy throughout this final table he was bluffing people off some crazy pots i really remember the one where he bluffed no more tilt off his two tens he had the eight seven on the nine nine six jack queen it was a crazy play it worked he just kept bluffing his opponents i thought he was a phenomenal uh a winner for cami styles um my favorite player of the final table well deserved very well done um, but uh, before we close out, let's, let's just take a look at uh, our final table results of the final nine players. We lost those two short stacks at the bottom so, so fast, right? Within the first five hands of the tournament. One of them was actually out second hand of the tournament. Then we lost the cash game player, Ansu Fati, in seventh place. 
and then it was Taxi Driver trying to put a stop to Cami style, but then ran into the two jacks of uh, Molinelli, I believe it was. Then it came down to No More Tilt from China. It was your pick, Linji. Uh, despite uh, coming to the final table in second place, he still did very well, was one of the least experienced players at the final table, a phenomenal score of 452,000 RMB. Then it was Chris Rudolph in fourth place, our most experienced player, but really I don't think he did too much at this one, but still a phenomenal score, uh, cashing for 603,000 RMB. Then it was CCW. TGNKQ. Now, this Brazilian player, he didn't really do much throughout the final table. In three-handed, he made that crazy play of the Jack-7, doubled up against Cami style, but he eventually went out in third place. And then it was that cool heads-up match between Molinelli and Cami style. Um, it did come out for the main event trophy winner, event number 16, was Cami style. It's been great, but uh, Lynn, I think it's going to have to come to an end. Uh, are you a little sad? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a little sad. Um, before we go, do we have an answer to the GG wildcard hand? We Is will, that something we get to We see? will be showing the GG wildcard hand answer uh, right after uh, you say your last words. I say my last words, Lynn. So thank you for having me. Uh, I've been uh, I've been loving hosting. It's been nice to meet you. It's the first time we've ever spoken. Yeah. We've done three streams together. I hope we do more in the future. Uh, maybe we'll see some see each other in the future on the the life felt. I'll be trying to needle you, <laughs> congratulating you on how you made a a straight flush, but your opponent made the foil flush. I don't know what's the what sorts of crazy stuff. I'll just three bet the shit out of you, and we can call it even, Randy. <laughs> no big deal. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's been great, Lynn. Um, I hope. Um, any final words you want to say before we close this one out? Yeah, uh, thank you so much to you, um, the production crew, and then also the viewers. I'm obviously very new to commentating. Um, everyone's been so kind, and I've had so much fun. Well, you've definitely been natural. Now, if you guys don't know Lin G, she's on the Instagram, she's on the Twitter. I don't remember the exact names of those, but I'm sure if you just type in Lin G Poker, it'll come up. Uh, so thank you, Lin, for uh, joining me throughout the stream here. and. I know you guys in there that are looking for those little freebies. All right. The answer to the GG Wild Card Cam is coming real soon. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you for the Super Millions coming up in a few days on the GG channel. So don't forget to subscribe and like if you're interested in watching that one. See you, guys. Bye. The GG Poker Wild Card Cam. What does Limitless do here? Oh, it's such a nice feeling having a flush choice D when you're Jake Schindler in this spot. How good is this guy? He's just going for max value with the straight. He has the queen 10. How good is this guy? Indeed. Limitless in the tank. Show me the puppy paws. Show me the flush. Let me see the goods. Whoa. Jake the snake with just ace high and wow. it's kicked off by limitless no surprise the guy's the amazing, best amazing amazing uh brent we got another one wrong we're just both wrong again yeah sad bad player to three bet the jack seven offsuit mano there we go diamond on the turn and can we go jack seven ace queen it's a face card. Could be a jack. Is that a jack? I think it is. It's and it is a oh, brutal, brutal, brutal. Oh, Nelly. Got tricked. He got debated. Can he hit the queen a four? Can he? Ace card or four Mike, side? That could be a four. It could be a four. I think it is a four. He has counterfeited the three nine. He made the wrong. We're all in the call. 51 million in the middle. Can it be over if Cammy Stock can lock it up? He does not. 10 on the flop. He's a five Nine up for the chop. Nine's not gonna chop it. Be careful. Five on the river and Monelli is out in second place. $165,000 for his second place performance. But it is this. The guy 